Hello, everybody, and welcome along to the Radio Show Limited continuing coverage of some of the best virtual racing in the world. Powered by VCO, this is round seven of the Nürburgring Langstrecking Series. That's NLS to you and me. Coming up in the next three and a half hours, it is the seventh round, as I say, the NYMEX three-hour race. And it's great to have your company for that. Beautiful weather at the virtual Nürburgring. It's John Heindorf on duty. If you're listening to us here and I've just popped out the room and want to hear the end of the Spa uh, WEC race, retune to RS1. But we're in sound, vision and the enhanced timing that we have, courtesy uh, of our colleagues uh, at the Nürburgring. Good to have your company here on RS3. Qualifying for the Porsche 911 Cup has resulted in Sim RC on top of the times from Asher Racing and then WS Racing by Nürburgring from Project GT. Uh, less than four seconds. In fact, let's call it four seconds for the top five with Sim Racing Academy Red in fifth position for the best of the BMWs in that class, uh, excuse me, for the uh, GT4 class, which is Porsche and BMWs. It is Porsches to the fore there with Matty Sippler putting the time in for core sim racing uh, in the number three or three, Manuel Weibel uh, from Weibel from Team RSO, then Heusingfeld 301, then Zorg Rainsport, the best of BMWs, Marcel Fassbender, the sim RC debt dot da carbon from patrick hen and tobias Berger. as far as the tcr category uh, which is all audis of course jürgen frank for sim rc tcr from full send racing in the 485 that was last ball marius gollenbeck for course sim racing tcr yannick danish for zorg rensport esports heusingfeld 404 marcel t uh, and then marion hansel from leipert uh, Team Nürburgring, WS Racing and Derna Motorsport. Uh, they were separated by not very much at all either. We've got the GT3 cars heading out at the moment and in perfect weather conditions, as we mentioned here at the virtual Nürburgring uh, with their qualifying session uh, with 13 minutes to go just after half past six uh, in Central Europe for the Nürburgring event. This is the seventh round of the season and we'll continue our coverage uh, for the rest of this year at RSL underscore studio if you want to get uh, touch, in touch uh, with me and I'll give you some times as they start to come through. It will take you just to take just a wee while for the GT3s to get their first times in. They tend to double back around the Grand Prix circuit uh, and then go on to a flying lap. Already going out onto the hats and back the early runners, and it's Sindra Setsas, who's been an absolute star for the Manfilter team, HTP Winwood, number 48, Mercedes-Benz. Keep an eye on them. They've got already a win under their belts uh, in both the real and the virtual NLS this weekend. And Beitzke Vesa for BS competition. Now, that's interesting. She was at the ELMS at Spa last weekend. First time that uh, I've had the pleasure of commentating on her in the virtual world as well. The BMW, of course, in GT3, still the venerable 
Z4, which still to my eyes looks very, very current indeed. And in GT3 spec looks very good. But it's Sindra Setsas in the number 48 man filter team HTP AMG GT3, who's setting the purple sectors at the moment. And meanwhile, Baitskavessa down into the foxhole. Great section of track. Try to stay off the kerb. Bottom out right at the very bottom of that before you head up the hill. Fifth gear down to fourth. Then one more third and then down to second for the last piece. Of, this, of the right-hander at the top of the forest section. Lovely bit of the track, this. Through the two lefts, let the uphill slow you down just a, a little bit before the third of those lefts. Then crest the brow, watch out for the back end stepping away here before you drop down to the hairpin. Short shifting. Now, down through the Kalnhard section, and it's hit. It's miss, miss, hit, isn't it, for these three? Into the hairpin, all the way down the gearbox to second again. Now, diving down towards the bridge at Adenar. Already up the other side of the bridge for Baitskavessa, who's in that BS competition, 189. So, now climbing the hill, these left-handers that seem to go on. It's only the last one, the one that Bites is coming up to now. There's a little bit of a lift there, tightens on you slightly. And then these very fast right-handed sweepers flat through the first of those left. Was the down and gear there? No, there wasn't. Now stay off the curbs here. Starting to get towards the bottom of the hill that leads up to the Caracciola Carousel. Really can't hit any of these curbs. Down through the gearbox, took the front end in. In for the end of the advertising, hoarding at the top of the hill as soon as you can see it. That's where you want to be entering the Caracciola Carousel. Tree slightly to the right of that is also a good one as well. Now that lovely run through the middle part of the circuit, where when you know the track, it's very, very good indeed. Sindra sets us for man filter, setting purple times at the moment. Barely enough time to get a lap in around here. Got to get out there. Sets us already through the middle part of the track and heading down towards The run for home, on towards, this is all flat out. Not a hint of a lift, by the way. Through Flans Garden, and now into the last third of the track. Very good time by Setsas, and at the moment he's leading ahead of Augustin Canapino for Marla Racing, a team, another of the winners this season. Sindra Setsas for the bright yellow man filters, HTP, Winwood Car, based in Altdienst in Germany, the real team, and taking a very close interest in what's going on in the virtual world. Bryson, Russell Ward. 
now the custodians of the HTP name in Europe as well as the Windward Racing Team in the US and bringing those two together across the Atlantic. Here comes then Sindra Setsas. Canapino setting good times, but not as good as that man filter. AMG across the line now and sets the best time. 27 degrees in the air, 40 degrees on the track. That's going to make things difficult in this three hour race. And I just wonder what that means. We've seen some of the teams split the race due to the tyre temps and the wear. 7.57.4 for 7.59.2 rather, but immediately Niels Koch goes to the head of the field with Team BMW Bank 7.57.452 in third Fabio Gross for Schnitzelam Racing, the another yellow Mercedes or AMG should I say, Beitzkevesa for BS, a couple of seconds further back in Fourth, then Phoenix, Christian Anders France and Jens Halter for EFP car collection. The next two up at RSL underscore studio. And if you're listening in at the moment on RS2. Good to have your company. Don't forget, we've got light, sound and vision together. So who else is looking good? Let me scroll down the timing screen. Marcus Eichhorn for Leipert Esports. Got a couple of three purple sectors in a lap that has 12 different sectors, of course, here at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Adam Christodoulou out there as well. What's his times looking like at the moment? He's just done a quick lap around the pit, around the uh, Grand Prix track and cut straight back in again. Christodoulou for Team Heusingfeld 101 in the GT3. Fabian Schiller is out for Vodafone team get speed as well he's coming to the end of his lap Christodoulou has indeed started a lap as well Christodoulou then out and just on the far side of the circuit as it stands at the moment putting a decent time in three-hour race of course this will give us a good idea of who's doing what in terms of who has the speed quite few cars out at the moment so that's the good news Christodoulou then heading over the top of yet another blind brow and into the Kleiner Carousel as he's at the end of the lap through Schwalbenschwanz is the proper name of that onto the Gallows Hill corner nailed that one absolutely nails that as he cuts it back to the second apex and heads on the Dottinger Hort picked him, up, picked him up somewhere around about Brunchen heading down through Teergarten towards the end of the lap. Reading a chapter of his book on his e-reader at the moment. Interesting to see, stayed up to the left-hand side there under the Bilstein Bridge. Didn't drift across to the right, but that's an easy flat left kink. Breaks insanely late up the hill, all the way past the second apex, almost clipping the Edge of the arm court on the left-hand side. At the end of the lap now, drags the car to the left-hand side as he's got traffic coming out onto the start-finish line. 
and goes through into fourth position for Heisingfeld 101. So it's BMW Bank, Niels Koch, Sindra Setzes for Manfilter, Marla Racing Team, Augustin Canapino, the Argentinian driver in the 186 in third. Krista Dulu at the moment on the outside of row two from Fabio Gross for Schnitzel Arm Racing, then BS Competitions by Skavessa. Christian Anders Franks, Andreas Franks for Phoenix. Jens Althaus makes up the top eight. Just hearing some very sad news from the USA where the voice of the Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach, Bruce Flanders, has died. Worked with Bruce a few times. Very distinctive commentator and broadcaster. Our condolences go to his friends and family, family particularly, friends he has many in US paddocks. News just coming to us a few moments ago. Right, let's see who else is still to put a lap in in GT3. If you're just joining us, Claudius Feed has Paul in the Porsche 911 Cup class with the 276 Sim RC Cup 2 car in the GT4 category, split between Porsche 718 Caymans and BMW GT4s. It is Porsches to the four. Matty Sipola in the 303 course sim racing ahead of a, another three Porsches before the first BMW for Marcel Fersbender and Simair C.DA Carbon, the 376 car. Jorgen Frank for Sim RC TCR from Full Send. Lars Bohr, Maurice Gollenbeck, Yanis Dadj, top four in the TCR category. Nicholas Max Len, uh, Schlein in the Adrenaline Motorsport car then finishing his lap off. He at the moment is the last of the 12. The ring Weizert Sim Racing Number 188 still out there for Martin Ehren as well. well here's Niklas. Heading down the Dottica Hur. Just behind him there, I think that is Martin Erlen. Yes, it is in the ring. Faziet Sim Racing car. So these are the last two cars to qualify. At RSL underscore studio. Coming through, going to be about an 8.05, it is an 8.05 then. For Nicholas Maxine. And the last couple of cars just coming through. There's Christian Andres Franz going through in the yellow Audi. Coming through now, Cedric Freiburg House for the Phoenix Racing Esport Orange team, currently 10th position in class, but he's not as quick as a couple of the Porsche Cup cars. He'll want to be quicker than those. Needs to improve his time a wee bit. Comes to the line now. And, well, I have no improvement for him on that one. Certainly not on his position. Baitska Visser has just improved her time, if not her position. She's still in sixth place for BS. Checkered flag is out. So there is going to be a chance for a second lap for some of these teams. And 
Here's Cook then for BMW Bank. He's the pole sitter. Should get the opportunity to finish this lap. Three. That's still... Excuse me, I think I said check the flag. Still seven minutes remaining, my apologies. Spurious message on my screen. Real pressure in these qualifying sessions. You've heard us talk to the winners in the past here on Radio Show Limited for these VCO events. And this is round seven of the digital Nürburgring Langstrecken series, powered by VCO, a virtual competition organization. Good smattering of real world drivers in the entry lists as well the early part of the season. Good to see Adam Christodoulou back with us again, as well as Augustin Canapino has done quite a bit of real world racing. And Baisca Visser, obviously. So, Niels Kosh then coming down the fast Dottigahoa. Public road to, well, actually to both sides, but mainly to the driver's left here, which can be somewhat off-putting if you're just tootling down towards sign-on and registration which is at the garage, the petrol station about halfway down on the uh, Dottigahoa and you forget there's things on the track particularly if you're driving back on the right-hand side of the road of course in Germany and something goes past you at 300 plus k's which seems to be just coming over your right shoulder and you think he's overtaking you effectively on the hard shoulder of the road to your right it wakes you up, let me put it that way. And that's a new fastest lap for Niels. Got down to a 7.56. 7.56.8. Marvellous stuff. Wonderful stuff. As the HTP car going through for Sindra sets us 7.59, his best. 8.01 last time around. Martin Erlen in the 1.88. Ring for that. Sim racing by Nürburgring Esports. Very striking green colour scheme on that car. 8.13.4. see who's improved. Well, we mentioned Baitska Visser. She improved to an 804, 805 for Nicholas Mal at Maxine for Adrenaline in sixth. In seventh, Nicholas Maxine's eighth. Christian Anders, no, he didn't improve. Jens Althaus for e, uh, FP improved, 8073. But a two and a half second gap at the moment. For Niels Koch, for Team BMW Bank, he's in the pit lane, having come round the short loop. That's impressive. Dark grey and BMW M Sport colours of the classic Z4. Again, just a reminder, Sim RC Cup on pole with a very creditable 8 or 7 7 for the Porsche Cup class in the 276 for Claudius Veed. GT4 is now a split class between the Porsche GT4s and the BMWs. That's the Cayman, of course, and the BMWs. Fastest time there, an 8.35.8 for Corsim Racing and Marty Sipola. Best of the BMW is Marcel Fesbender with an 840. And just to round, round off the TCRs, 852-1, the best time there by Jürgen Frank 
for Simrc TCR in the 176. Confirmation then of the grid. Team BMW back from the AMG of Man Filter Team HTP looking for another victory. Sindra sets us qualifying there. Augustin Canapino for Marla Racing Team uh, next up. And as we head through, Team uh, Heusingveld, Schnitzelam on row two, then BS Competition Adrenaline on three, Phoenix and AFP on row four. And behind them, the Christian Anders, uh, France, the Phoenix car, then EFP, Jen, Jens Elfhaus and Cedric, Tim Freiburghaus, the Phoenix, and then the ring, Heisiet, Sim Racing by Nürburgring Esports, Audi with Martin Erland. A little bit off the pace, but as we know, as we know only too well how these things can go. And it will all come down to the strategy. Many different strategies seen here in the past. Uh, Cup 2, Sim RC confirming there ahead of Asher Racing, Martin Asher uh, once again in the 227. Then WS uh, on row number 2. Uh, they have alongside them the uh, Project GTI instead Sim Racing Academy, Violent Racing and H2. H2, then uh, Rye Velton and Noville Racing Core with Ring Racing. Porsches, well, actually GT4. Core again, Matty Sippler from Team RSO. Heusingveld 301, then it's Hartenberg, then Zorg Rensport with Christian Berg. And behind them on row number three, it's the BMWs, Marcel Fessbender, Robin Stroll for SimRC and Adrenaline E-Motorsport. Then T3, AMC, Birkenfeld, EV, Stable release. They are in the same class, although I, I, I know they do two different cars and everybody has been used in the past to just been having a single Porsche class, but the new GT4s are now in the same class, the new BMW M4 GT4s. It's Sim RC and Jürgen Frank again from Lars Ball and Full Send Racing, 476 from 485. Marius Gollenbeck from Yannick Danish in the TCRs. That's your front tour for Sim RC, Full Send Core, the usual suspects at the front there. Uh, and then Zorg Rensport, Team Heusingfeld, Leip Leipertz, Esport Yellow, Ryan Hensel there. Team Nürburgring, Renny Kershoff. WS Racing by Nürburgring. Matthias Sauer as well in eighth position. And then Dominic Spickler in the Döner Motorsport Club AV Audi. All Audis in the TCR category. But the news this week that in the real world, due to COVID, Mazda have shelved their Mazda 3 TCR effort, which is a great shame because... That was looking very good indeed from the uh, early pictures that I'd seen of the uh, of the car as it was being developed. So no need for the cars to do the warm up lap here. They all get gridded up on the run down past. In fact, where you come on in the tourist far and the tourist laps, just on the right-hand side, the little red cabin where you get your ring cart swiped and buy yourself how many laps you think you want. And then head off into the wild blue yonder. It's always a bit scary. First time you go back there after a wee while. It's John Hangdor for RSL and VCO with the seventh round of the Digital Nürburgring, Langstreck and Siri. It's the Nymex three-hour on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. And it's Nils Kosch and Zindra Setzes for Team BMW Bank and Manfilter who will lead them off. What is the tactics going to be? What are the tactics going to be in this race? 20 seconds before we roll the Porsche safety car that 
is sitting at the front of the field. Got a couple of cars missing, including Augustin Canapino. He's not there on row two. And I don't think Fabio Grossa was there either for Schnitzelam. Couldn't see the bright yellow. Ah, just dropped in there now. OK, that's good. Both of those cars having dropped in, and that will allow the Porsche safety car to roll down. Are you ready? I've been missing this. It seems ages since we've done a DNLS. Just after 7 o'clock in the evening, CEST, Central European Summertime. And it will be the big GT3s at the front. A full grid of 41 cars. Heading down towards Tergart in the end of the lap. Yeah, not sure who your favourites are. Well, we'll try and point out as many as we can through the three-hour race. Pit stops, of course. Tactics, absolutely. Probably in this heat, I would think no more than seven laps for the GT3s. Possibly only six. It may well be tyre-determined rather than fuel-determined here. I don't see Canapino. I don't see Canapino in the Marla Racing 186 car. No, he's in the pits, that's why he's showing in the pits. Nicholas Maxshine from Adrenaline as well for the moment, showing in the pits as well as we are green and running. Watch those cars join in from later BMW Bank. There's Canapino in the white front of Audi sitting in the pits. He missed getting onto the grid. The Schnitzelheim car that I thought was missing, that is there, that at the moment, fourth in line, the second of the two. Highlight the yellow Mercedes Benz as they threw the Haug hook for the first time. And BMW Bank in the hands of Niels Koch leads out from Sintra Zetsas. Adam Christen Dulu. Good start for Team Heusingveld. Then Schnitzelam, BS competition, Betzkevisa. Betzkevisa, excuse me. From Christian Franz, then Phoenix. And then his teammate, Cedric Felberghaus, in there as well. Here comes the get speed car down the inside. Can't miss that one. With Fabian Schiller in the bright red. Vodafone kind of spin. For the number five, that's Freiburg House. The light blue Phoenix goes around at the first time of asking into the hairpin short Grand Prix circuit, remember. Now, the Porsche Cup class, all Porsches, all the 911 GT three R's, which are the Porsche Cup cars. Taku Wontanabe starting for Novel Racing ahead of the Claudius Veed Sim RC Cup. Now, that's a change there. No, he's in the pit lane now. Shown in the pit lane from Claudius Veed, who is in the pole position on the left-hand side of the picture is the bright yellow of Martin Asher, who gets the 276 into the lead. 276 is Veed, excuse me. Asher's in the uh, 227 both with the Asher Racing logos on them. Round the outside from the Pullman. Gets it done, spin in the middle of the, the pack, but mercifully is not hit. The bright green project, GT Heinz DE, Lucas Lippert. And presumably then, all those cars that started in the pit lane have been allowed to go now. Canapino, Maxshine and Watanabe have indeed, uh, Watanabe, have uh, been released as the pole man feed from Asher from Ole Schumann for WS Racing and then Tobias Ruth 2 for Violent Racing then Nicholas Last here, come the T, uh, here comes the GT4 class BMWs and Porsches Porsches to the front of that field Dominic Spicker for Dürner Motorsport Club He's out of position. He must be in the pits as well. So it's Matty Sipola. So a lot of cars starting from the pit lane. Sipola from Paul in the 303 goes to the racing line. And then behind him, it's four wide with a BMW trying to squeeze in among the Porsches, but not quite so handy on the brakes as the Cayman 718s ahead. And that's the Sim. Uh, that was the Sim SC. Carbon. That was Ma uh, Marcel Fesbender again in the Asher Racing colours. The yellow with the AR on the side of the door drops into fifth place. Drops into uh, fifth place. 
fifth place, yeah. Usual rough and tumble at the start of these races. BMW M4 is relatively new. Had them for a couple of rounds now. Part of the last major update from iRacing and another big one to come next month, including we here, the closed top LMP2 car. Right, here's the TCR. I got ahead of myself a little bit earlier on. And this is always great fun. Coming to the line now. Already five minutes since the leaders crossed the line and went away. So Felix Luding from Steen Ledger. Sim TCR, up goes Marius Gullenbeck in the court. Sim Racing TCR number 403. Nice move. In the second, that orange and white car. Red, white and black, if you wish. Wide on the... Outside the 404 of Marcel T, Team Heusingfeld. He's lost a couple of places there. Good start again, though, by all the pole sitters. Have really started well, haven't they? At RSL underscore studio, if you want to get in touch. Hello to Team Valkenhorst, who are listening in and watching as well. Sound video-show.co.uk. Let's pick up the GT Battle Team Snitchel out right up the tailpipes of Adam Christodoulou who's in the Heusingfeld black, silver and red car as they round the left-hander that is on the far side of the circuit before they drop into the carousel marvellous absolutely marvellous stu stuff out of the carousel then heading up towards her act and then the outstanding section through Vipperman, Eichbach and down to Brunchen. Good spot to watch at Brunchen. They'll come to that in a wee moment. Schnitzelau, that very bright yellow car sitting in behind the dark, a similar machine. As they head down now towards, well, over the brow rather, and now down towards the left-hander before Brunchen. Take the block paving on the outside, climbing up out of Brunchen. Love it, love it the bits. Fast, committed, and here comes Fabio Grosser for Schnitzel Arm Racing. Behind them, not too far behind them either, is Baitska Visa. But a couple of seconds back, she's got Christian Andreas Frank for Phoenix Racing right on her rear wing. Flat out through Flansgarden. Down towards the Schwalbenschwanz. Another bridge to cross before they get to that area of the track. Oh, no. Was there a little mistake there? Oh, no, that's first and second, excuse me. Niels Kosh goes through the Kleiner carousel and onto the Gallows Hill. That triple pressure right hander that leads onto the Dottiger Hoa. Fabio Grosser still right there. Adam Christodoulou. Amazingly, Adam Christodoulou with the number two behind it means he was the second person to register that name on I racing. You wouldn't have thought there'd be another one that was into his racing. Massive, massive draft. Down the long Donniger Hoare and Grosser pulls out to the right hand side in the Schnitzel Arm Racing, the car sponsored by the Schnitzel restaurant chain. I've left it as long as I could. We're eight minutes in, and it's the first time I've mentioned the Schnitzel restaurant chain. Towards the end of the lap, Niels Koch's gone through. Sindra sets us in second, a couple of seconds back, then 3.4 seconds back to that battle we were watching. Fabio Gross and Adam Christodoula now in fourth. Baitska Visa is another two and a half seconds further back and he's pulled out to just over a second on Christian Andreas France. In the cup class. The gorgeous, sonorous sounds in the forest of the flat six Porsche engine being tortured by Cladis Veed and Martin Asher 
who are first and second. Both with the Asher Racing logos on the cars, the AR. Coming through to the end of their first racing lap as well. Ah, oh, magnificent. Wherever you are in the world, sound vision, enhanced timing, we have it here for you. On the RS2, uh, sorry, RS3 channel for you this weekend. Plenty of hard racing that we've seen in the last six rounds and nothing to suggest there will be anything different here. Porsche class, this is the GT4. Porsche's at the front of the class, at least. With the new BMW, he's not quite up to speed now. Marty Sippler for Core Racing, then Team RSO 397, then the Heuskenfeld 301. And it's second and third that are together at the moment. They're striking black and silver Heusingfeld livery. Manufacturers of quality sim rigs and equipment. It says here, it's what they told me. You all know that anyway. Backed teams for a very long time. And then at Hartenberg, just drifting off the back of Manuel Weibel for a moment in the light blue and white RSO car. Not the easiest cars to drive, these little GT4 Cayman 718s. But very, very satisfying when you get it right, is what the drivers say. The BMW and G M4 GT4 is just a little bit off the pace since they've been introduced. There'll be updates, there'll be balance of performance, and there will be people getting their heads around the setups as well, of course. Best of the BMWs. Uh, sitting behind four Porsches. That's Marcel Fesbender, who was the fastest qualifier as well. Drafting effect taking. A little bit of an advantage then for the Heusingfeld car who pulls out to the right-hand side, the 301. Leonard goes round the outside even before we get to the braking area going up the hill. And there's four cars very much together. And right on the back of that is Marcel Fesbender in the Sim RC car. That is the first of the BMWs and this is good. This is very good indeed for the BMWs. We've not seen them this competitive. It's tend to be almost two races. Now, I did see the was a few people that started from the pits. Oli Schumann, WS Racing by Nürburgring. And uh, Bendix Warmeyer for AMC Birkenfeld. They are both listed in the pits, so they've had very early problems. They did start the race. Did about a quarter to a half of a lap but they are listed back in the, quick, the pits. That suggests to me they've quit back to the pits. That'll get them a tow back penalty plus any damage repairs that they need. Actually, let me just have a look at those times and see. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if I can get some news on that for you. Back at the sharp end of the field, Fabio Grossa hasn't been able to shake Adam Christodoulou. You want action? Directly goes back to TCR. Always action in TCR. Looks like Felix Ludig's dropped back to second. Yes, he has. That's Steen in front of him. Steen Ledger. And Lud Ludig cross the line quickest in the bright yellow car quickest and first as he dives down the inside into that tricky downhill right-handed braking area into the loop second place for full send racing Marius Gollenbeck's there for core as well it 
time. Back to third and fourth in GT3. Top class. Adam Christatulu will know the Schnitzel Schnitzelarm logo very well because he's been staring at it for 10 miles or so already. Probably a little more than that. Two similar AMG GT3s then battling for third position. Here's how they stand in the opening running. Team BMW back from pole position. Nils Kosh has about three and a half seconds on Sindra sets as for Manfield, the TBH TP. That's another AMG GT3. Then this battle that we've been talking about. Fabio Gross and Adam Christodoulou in another couple of AMG GT3s. They've got about two and a half seconds on Baitska Visser, Visser, who's got five seconds on Fabian Schiller for Vodafone, who's made his way through to sixth position ahead of Phoenix Racing's Christian Andres France. Dennis Jens Althaus for EFP. Marla Augustin Canapino started from the pit lane after the GT3s went by, I reckon, and he's made his way up the ninth. But he's 30 seconds already behind the leaders. Remember for the GT3s, if you pick, you have to change tyres. So, with the temperatures up as well, 42.2 on the track, 27 in the air. Beautiful time to go racing. And just wonder whether, once again, this is a race that will be broken up into bite-sized pieces determined by the tyre performance rather than by the fuel load. Have been one or two changes in the fuel loads over the last few races, but then again, the heat has what is what has been causing issues at the front of the field in terms of tyre life. Christodoulou has got a good run here, but wasn't able to make the pass before the twisty Tiergarten end of the Dottigahua across the line. Completing lap number two and heading on to lap three. Bites Gavissa, the BS competition in the white and blue BMW. Not able to close in, even though these two are fighting. Schiller up the sixth position in the Vodafone car with Phoenix and Christian Andres France now three tenths of a second behind. So that's a decent battle as well. But for the moment, it's gone the way of Fabian Schiller, who's on fire at the moment. Just 20 seconds off the leader. Still the best battle on the circuit for third overall and in GT3. Claudius Feed and Martin Asher are still half a second apart as well. But they'll be work, trying to work together and they've pulled out an 11 second lead over Nicholas Last for Sim Racing Academy in the Porsche Cup class. He's got 2.6 on Tobias Roof for Violent Racing. Still Matti Sipala for Core Racing from Five seconds he's pulled out on Leonard Hartenberg, and he's having a battle with Martin Vabel. And Christian Bugs right there, and Marcel Festbend is right there. And then there's four seconds back to Marcus Eichhorn in the second of the BMWs, the Leipzig Esports car. And for the sake of completeness, Felix Luding leads by half a second from Steen Ledger for full send in TCR with Marcus Gollenbeck on another three tenths further back. And we've got the top one, two, three, four, five in about two seconds. Down to Marcus Ty for Heusingfeld in the TCR category. New fastest lap for Claudius Veed in the Sim RC Cup 2 Porsche at 12.9. 
Freiburg House into the pits at the end of that lap. Martin, Martin Erlen into the pits at the end of that lap, both from GT3, the 5 and 188. So that's the Ring Faisiet and the Phoenix Racing cars. So that's an early stop, but sometimes we've seen that work. Get another driver in and get them into clear air. First and second in the Porsche Cup class, the Cup 2. Absolutely together. A howl of that flat six. Flat 12 really there, isn't it, as they're on the Grand Prix circuit at the moment. So 20 minutes gone. Recalibrate your mind if you're watching us for the first time or listening to us for the first time on RS2. Yes, we're 20 minutes onto the race, but the leaders are running on their third lap. As is the case for the leaders in Cup 2, just starting their third time, heading on to the hats and back at the start of the Nord Schleife and the North Loop. Claudius Veed then leading out with his mirrors full of Martin Nasher. Formation driving at the moment by these two, both carrying the Asher Racing decals. What I'm not seeing is Martin Asher making any kind of hostile move towards Claudius at the moment. And this is good news because they're all of us at the start of the lap, they were 10 seconds up, now the 13 seconds up. So these two are stretching away. What I don't know this week is whether Martin has got a core driver. He's often done this himself. He's got uh, Marcus Yirik, uh, Yirak listed with him. Claudius Veid has got Simon Grossman listed with him on the entry list. Not always exactly as uh, as I've printed it out, and indeed there were a few gaps in the entry list that I have here for some of the drivers, which I'm filling in as we go along here. This battle for the lead going through to the end of the foxhole. It's to me that Martin might just be a tiny bit quicker at the moment. And an hour four stood up towards Metzgerfeld. And you climb up to the top of the hill where they are now. Lovely crisp gear changes, but not too hurried from. Martin Asher now down into Callan Hard. Late down change. Another shift up here. Yeah, little short shift. Coming down towards the bottom of the hill. And the hairpin. Yeah, Martin at the moment is, has got a quicker car underneath him for me. But he's not putting any really substantial concerted moves. Ex Muller then, bottom of the hill, the bridge. Now in TCR, as ever, all hell's breaking loose. Full send, look to be in the lead at the moment, but here comes Felix Luding down the inside. Full send, the darker car to the right-hand side, side by side. Right in behind is the core car. A little bit of bump drafting going on there as well by the core racing machine. That's uh, Marius Gollenbeck in that car. There's nothing between that top five. Fifth place car is uh, Marcel T who has the fastest lap in the class at the moment in the Heusingfeld colours he's the dark car with the silver and red on the back of it the fifth of those five so it's Sim RC full send core Zorg Rensport the car I haven't mentioned Yannick Danish and they're all attacking and defending unless you right at the back or right at the front right at the front you're just defending right at the back you're just attacking the three in the middle have got their heads twisting round like a demented owl at the moment those three they don't know where to look 
really good driving. Twenty wheels of TCR action locked together as if tied by very short and invisible bungee cords at the moment. They stretch out and in, but not by very much through the hats and back. Meantime, Baitskavisa still trying to close on this battle for third, which is Adam Christodoulou and right ahead still the Snitchelheim car which is the Grosser machine. Fabio Grosser comes across the line. And again, interesting to me, with Fissa just appearing onto the start-finish line now, that Christodoulou couldn't use the draft, or maybe didn't want to. Now, is this Christo being clever and saving a bit of fuel down the Dottigerhoer? Won't necessarily be enough to get him another lap, but it will mean that his fuel takes fuel fill takes a little less time. In the foxhole, TCR category. Once again, Felix Luding leads five cars with Marcel T on the back for Heusingfeld. This could get very messy very quickly if. One of the guys at the front loses it. Gollenbeck right in the middle in the orange, white and black core sim racing car, the 403. And the only one really who would have any chance of reacting to anything ahead of him is the Heisingfeld car. Two litre turbocharged four cylinder engines. Beautifully modelled the audio as well as the visuals. Feel it's leading. Just got a little bit better of an exit there, didn't he? As he tries to pull a little bit of breathing space on the pursuing four TCRs as he heads down to Exmuller. And the bridge used to be a nice little change of tarmac. Just about where you needed to be hitting the bricks. That's all been resurfaced down there. Accurately modelled as well. Nicky Louder's corner coming up next. The still unexplained incident that Nicky had there and then to Bergwerk. Bergwerk, an absolute exercise in patience. Can't be too early on the throttle there, otherwise you take too much of the exit curb on the left-hand side, which you don't want to do. Then you start climbing and you're climbing for a very long time here. So actually hitting the apices of these left-handers is not that important. You want to put as little lock into the steering as you can. It's that last left-hander that they've just gone through that tightens up on you a little bit. Still accelerating, still climbing. Heading up through Kesselschen and Klosterthal. Meantime, further around the track. The battle for second, third and fourth. Through Flansgarden. Oh, and the Heusingfeld 718 came and going very, very wild there. That's the second place car of Leonard Hartenberg. He's dropped about eight seconds to the leader. And if he's driving like that, I'm not surprised. He got a bit wild at Flansgarden. It is pretty flat there. There's a bit of block plate paving on the exit on the left hand side that you always use anyway. But he was well beyond that and ran out of that quite early. Kicked up a few clods of earth to Manuel Weibel and Christian Berg, who's who are both sitting in behind him. Now they're onto the Dottinger Hurt. Now let's see Christian Bug, the third of these three cars. He should be getting a double tour. Doesn't look like they're close enough, does it? But it, you'll get a tour, even from the distance that they are at the moment. Looks like Vibel's pulling away. He must be running a really, I wonder if he's running a really skinny car. And that's why it's moving around so much. Maybe a little less rear wing on it. They're just dragging back to him now. 
but it's taking them a very, very long time. Here comes Bug on the RSO car of, of Vibel. Vibel catching the leader, but they haven't got to him. The leader of this little battle pack. This is second, third and fourth. The leader in class, Matty Sipola, well away. Over eight seconds to the good. The front of the field, the gap between first and second. Niels Kosh to Sindra sets us down six seconds, then nearly eight seconds back to that great battle, enthralling battle. Fabio Grossa and Adam Christodoulou. And then Baiska Visser, another six and a half seconds further back in fifth. So still Christian Bug looking at the back of the 397 RSO car. In this battle for podium positions in the GT4 category Adam Christodoulou looking at the back of Fabio Grossa he's in the Graciola carousel Christodoulou of course who has raced in full metal racing with some success on the Nürburgring Nordschleifer, honing his talent in online racing as well. Part of the growing number of drivers in the long established Morpho Racing League, including some of our RSL staff you'll find in there, their club league. I was informed by Joe Bradley, who's on commentary duty at Thruxton this weekend for a classic real-world event. Now it's pouring with rain and forecast to be slightly wetter tomorrow. Yeah, Bradley just telling me that their club league has gone from the Skippy car to the SR8 Radical in their weekly racing league. It's changed recently. The SR8 just a little bit more lazy than the SR3, which I've raced in real life, which is a grand little car. Obviously, the SR8 with effectively two four cylinder Suzuki engines on a common crank, for just under three litres of V8. And that uh, is a little quicker down the straight, but. Uh, Found it a little more cumbersome through the corners. Downforce car, of course, paddle shift, two pedal car. Hello to those of you who may be joining us from the Spa Six Hours, which has just come to an end over on RS1. Uh, no spoilers here. I'll be catching up with that as well in a wee while. So I've done here. We'll be uh, having plenty of replays for you. And it was uh, Bruce Jones and Johnny Palmer who were on duty there at RSL Studio if you want to talk to us. Still got plenty of racing here, just under two and a half hours waiting to hear and see what the strategy is going to be from the leading cars. We've had a couple of cars that have stopped early, but uh, none of the leaders. Marla Racing, Augustin Canapino started from the pits, added adrenaline, the one 2, two at the front of the field. Cup class, Claudius V, and now just a couple of tenths ahead. In fact, this, these two have been working in tandem for my money. 16 seconds now they've pulled out over Nicholas Last, who is in third from Tobias Riff in fourth. And another six and a half seconds further back. Chris Herke for Renvelt Pro Team is closing in on Thomas Asmus Asmussen for fifth position in the H2 performance team, but he's a couple of seconds back, just under. 
But I, I just don't get the, the feeling that these two effectively teammates under the Asher Racing sponsorship. And you'll notice that uh, the same RC Cup car have got, uh, with Claudius in, has got the Asher Racing logo on. It's also on Martin's car. Now he's got a really good draft. Martin pulls up to the back of Claudius. They're halfway down the Dottinger Hall. Sweep out to the left-hand side. Return the favour? I think probably so. You might just see Claudius pull back in behind him in here and get the draft back. They've been very respectful of each other. You could get at least another couple of Porsches in that gap and probably if they weren't racing together as a team here, we might well have, certainly have done in the past. To the end of the lap then, new race leader Martin Asher goes ahead in the Porsche Cup 2 category. Coming through to complete their fourth lap. Now, will Claudius have a go into turn one on the brakes? Asher sort of defends, goes early into the pit lane exit. Buffalo Gals around the outside, possibly. No, again, respectful from those two. So these two still, I was going to say still battling, I'm, 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 I'm still not certain that they are battling away. It just doesn't have the, the look of, of that serious uh, battle. Well, I say that, and maybe they're just being respectful of each other. Could be. I suppose that they don't want to put themselves in trouble. In trouble so early. Matty Seeple has done a cracking job for court in the GT4 category now with two different manufacturers there, Porsche and BMW. The battle is behind him, but somewhere uh, behind him. He's got uh, about 10 seconds on Leonard Hartenberg for Heusingfeld. Then it's Manuel Viable for Team RSO. And behind that... It should be Christian Bug. Yeah, it is. And they've sort of dropped Marcel Fassbender in the first of BMWs. And Andre Havendank for EFP Car Collection in one of the GT3 cars is going to come through that battle sometime soon as well. Christian Bug still on the back of those two. And that five and a half, six seconds further back is Andre Havendank. So Verbal having another look in that RSO 397 car. As they come to the end of the lap through the tear garden and onto the Grand Prix track again. Doing your tour as far and you return hard left. Hard left. Hard, if you turn hard left, you'd have been in the Dorrance having a cup of tea. Turn hard right. down towards the first corner, Heisingfeld from RSO and in third place in GT4 behind them fourth, Christian Berg for Zorg Rensport so the top four, core Heisingfeld, RSO, Zorg Rensport Esports in that GT4 category for big names, big teams it's now 18 seconds Niles Koch has on the field Schnitzelheim and Krista Dulu. 
in second and third from the BMW bag teams. Fabian Schiller has just pitted, I think. Yes, he has, because he's pa passed that car over to Alexi Blomas. Now, that's interesting. So that was at the end of lap four for Fabian Schiller. And he'd worked his way up to, I think, sixth, did we say, possibly fifth at the time. Canapino from the pit lane is now up to fifth. And there's only 11 seconds be behind Baitske Visser in the battle at the sharp end of the field. Martin Asher and Claudius V continue their formation, driving in first and second, the 227 and the 276 Porsches for Asher and Sim RC. They've got 18 and a half seconds on Nicholas Last, who's seven seconds ahead of Tobias Ruff and five seconds ahead of Thomas Asmussen. He's got Chris Hooker. I said he was closing in. He's under a second now, Hooker, in the Renveld Protein car. So, Gross and Krista Dulu now battling for second place. The other car that's pitted, of course, is the man filter HTPT. So, Canapino is out of that, and Jack Sedgwick is in. So once again, it's Jack Sedgwick sharing with Canapino this weekend. Here comes Krista Dulu, best one we've seen him have. He shoes, he eschews the opportunity to pull out though. There was definitely a wee lift there from Christo. And that was barely, well, he wasn't much further beyond the Audi Sport Bridge, but he did not take the opportunity to go through. I wonder if he's pitting this time around. He definitely had the run that time, no doubt about that in my mind. I thought he maybe didn't have the setup, and that was what he was struggling with, but he did not have the run that time around. They both go to the right hand side. Are they peeling off in the pits? No, they're not. They go on to another lap. So a get speed performance. Fabian Schiller out. As we mentioned. Lexi Blomas, oh, Axeli, at Axeli as he's known, in for a double stint we hear now from the team. So there's the first. Vestiges, at least, of a bit of tactics playing out. Twenty-three or twenty-four laps, maybe, depending on the pace and the heat. Still forty-three on the track, twenty-seven in the air. Going to be taking it out of these tyres. All the teams will be looking. Oh, speed out on the circuit for Nicholas Last. Oh, my goodness, that was the third place car. And the red and white car that just went past him has demoted him. Two fourth position, so that's a change in the Cup 2 category. Tobias Roof went through in the violent racing red and white car. So Nicholas there, I think, spinning on his own. Didn't see anybody else around him, even though we just caught the last of that as he was coming through the exit of uh, Flans Garden, wasn't it? Fast part of the circuit, he'd do well if he's done no damage there. It looks pretty straight. He was off at the side of the circuit and recovering when I picked him up. Let's have a look at the VCO replay there and see what he did. At the end of Flans Garden, goes across the... Oh no, it's further back than that, my apologies. Coming to the top of the hill. Down through the fast sweepers. Okay, yes, that was the... There's the jump. He's a bit further back than I thought he was. Gets onto the dirt. Oh, he did hit the... Did hit the uh, wall on the left-hand side just before he headed in to Flansgard. So that was really quick indeed. And he's been very lucky where well, he's done damage to the left front. 
We say this all the time, not always easy to see the damage, but the driver will be feeling it, and I think that might require some time spent on damage rectification. Two hours and 16 minutes to go, round seven of the Nürburgring Langstrecker Series digital version. somewhere in the region of two and a quarter hours to go we are watching the battle between second and third and I've not taken my eyes off this really since the start in fact it's the battle for the lead now isn't it of course because we have had a stop by the BMW uh, Team BMW Bank car. Nils has got out of that car and in has got Kai Kishuba. So that is the battle for the lead now. Fabio Grosser and Adam Christodoulou heading. back towards us at the start finish line so they climb through the heavily wooded section in the last third of the circuit now over the jump and now heading down towards Brunchen keep the car tucked in on the left hand side through in fact, that was uh, a little bit further on than I thought. They're onto the flange garden, excuse me. That's what you get for taking my eyes off the screen for a moment. Looks to me as if the tyres, the rear tyres in particular, are just starting to go for Fabio Grosser. Christodoulou with a slightly better car underneath them at the moment, I would say. They are on their sixth lap. They'll end their sixth lap at the end of this one. And I reckon one or both of these may pit at the end of this lap. Their lap times have been decent. But you've got cars behind them, of course, which have done... are on laps with newer tyres. And here's the problem that they've got. They're doing eight or sevens. And behind them, Augustin Canapino on new tyres is doing 8.05s. 
and an 8 or 3 for Kai Kishuba in the BMW Bank car. Jack Sedgwick, 8 or 5. Been out a little bit longer now. So surely these guys have got to realise that they're in trouble. Not going to get uh, full course cautions or slow zones, and we never get safety cars here anyway. So in comes the Stitch Lamb car. So Chris Tatulu goes on, on, on to another lap. Now I'm not sure in the Heusingfeld car that that's a smart thing to do. Mats Thorger, uh, Hutzfeld and Jan Santowski still to get in that car. Gaggle of TCR cars at the first corner. That is led by the court car. That's Marcus Gollenbeck in the lead of the race for TCR. So the four has the five has become four. So who have we dropped? The Zorg Rensport car has been into the pits, I reckon. Yeah, it Hart is easy in the pits now, so that's dropped out of that top five battle, which is now left to Gollenbeck for court. Sim Racing TCR Felix Luding in the yellow and black car in second. Full send now in third, the 485, the dark coloured car. And the second of the dark coloured cars in there, now fourth, is the Heusingfeld car in the silver, black, and red. So these four still to make their first pit stops and again that may be a tactical stop or maybe there was a bit of damage that we didn't see in that uh, thinking for the TCR stop for Sork Rensport Nicholas Schneider uh, is in that car let's just check to see if he started that race no he didn't of course he didn't it was Yannick wasn't it who started that race Yannick Danish so that has been a driver change after five laps completed. So they'll probably do 20, 21 laps. Oh, there's been a spin for Baisca Visser in the BMW. Looked like the hats and back, the little glimpse I got there. Let's have a look again. Oh, in that battle. No, that's... Oh, that's not the place to go around the outside. Big tank slapper, but misses the barrier for Beitzker. Trying to go around the outside in that middle part. I think there was a little clip on the full send car. And then Beitzker finding reverse, or at least trying to find reverse and continue. There may be some slight damage to the left rear of that BMW Z4 and to the right front of the Audi of Marcel T for the... Uh, of, uh, excuse me, Steen. It is, of course, isn't it? Steen Ledger, Ledger in the full set racing 485 car. And that's allowed the leading pair just to pull away by a second or so and split that battle up. That's absolutely typical Nürburgring, isn't it? Faster cars coming through. Still waiting to see what happens at the sharp end of the field as Adam Christodoulou is coming to the end of his seventh lap. Beitzkevisa, of course, at that point was in second place, but she's dropped a huge amount of time huge amount of time something in the region of 20 seconds with that mistake in traffic just hadn't quite cleared the TCR car should be annoyed with herself for that full send racing 485 car absolutely doing the right thing the virtual drivers briefing The class cars stay on the racing line. It's up to the faster cars to pick their way through. Kai Kishuba is setting the timing screen alight at the moment. So Christodoulou, Visser, Christian Andreas, France, 
the top three have not stopped. First car that stopped at the front of the field is the TM BMW back, the Paul sitting car, the 107. Kashuba has taken that car over and he has picked up exactly where Niels Koch finished at the end of the first five laps. Here's Visser coming through those TCR leaders again as they climb up from Bergwerk through Kesselschen on the way to Klosterdal now right on the far side of the circuit Christodoulou surely has to pit this time around what have we got left just coming down to the two hour mark well, as it stands, 22 or 23 laps, I reckon, this race. Been a bit of an argy and bargy. Oh, big spin again for the bright green. Uh, this is the, we're in the Cup 2 class there. And that bright green Porsche was the one we saw spinning early in the race. That's gone around again. Now more traffic for the TCR leading pack to have to deal with. Stan Ledger with Marcel T. They're battling for third and fourth and through comes a pride of GT3 cars. And there's so few places on the Nürburgring Nordschleife where you can easily let even a much faster car go through. Now, into the pit lane. These are the leading cars in the GT4 category. So, your Caymans and the first of the BMWs. Looks like the RSO car's got out. Weibel looks like he's just got out in front of the core car. And it's the race on the pit lane speed limiter. So, maybe a short fill there to try and get track position Weibel and Pascal sticks now behind the wheel of the core sim racing too so a driver change for core but Weibel stayed in so those guys were battling at the very sharp end of the cup category Weibel sticks Maxi Fritz now behind the wheel of the 301 Heusingfeld car Sasha Berger for Zorg Rennsport and then it looks like it's Sandro Petz, Petroziolo for Liepert in the first of the BMWs in fifth. Here comes the overall leader to the end of the lap. It's Adam Christodoulou for Heusingfeld. And this time he surely will come into the pit lane. This will be the end of seven laps. We expect to see a driver change to Mats Thorger Hothfeld. Hothfeld will then hand over to Sentowski. And that spot on the hour, or just under the hour. But I don't think there would have been very much more in the tank there for Adam. Here comes Beitzke. Beitzke Visser did a pretty good job. She'll be cursing her luck. And that slight misjudgment going through the TCR lead battle. The bright yellow Phoenix Audi, I think, will come in as well for Christian Andreas France, should do, and is. So that should allow Kai Kashuba to come through any second now. And there he is. My goodness, he'd already closed right up on them. Here come the TCR cars. The leading TCR cars are into the pit lane as well. And that looked to me as though it's the top four coming in. Luding was leading there from Gollenbeck, from Ledger, and then Ty. So Sim TCR, Core, Full Send, and Heusingfeld, pretty much as quick as you could say that, were all together again as they came in. Matthias Sauer in the WS Racing by Nürburgring Audi should be the next one by. He's not stopped. 
But of course, the Zorg Rain Sport car has, and now has Nicholas Schneider at the wheel. So Sauer has pitted as well. As Sedgwick's gone through in second for Manfilter Team HTP Winwood. That was the car that he took over relatively early on, didn't he? So he's that's been a net gain for the Manfilter racing car. Sindri Setsat qualified and did the first four laps. Sedgwick took over. Probably for a double in the middle, so that could be as many as 12 or 14 laps, depending on their stint. I clearly need to put some more coal on the fire of my old computer here, because I'm still not getting the details of how many laps we might get. But we're down to the hour mark now. Let's call it six and a bit laps. 3.6 is the rear team. And if it's three thirds, that would only make it a, a 19 lap race, which would be a short lap indeed. Very short lap indeed. The TCR battle continues after their pit stops, and the interest there will be as to where Nicholas Schneider turns up after the leaders ahead of him made the pit stop because they were a little bit out of kilter. Looks to me as if Jürgen Frank has got back out in the lead from Patrick Kabijny and Lars Ball, then Michael Brautikin for Heusingfeld and then Schneider. So it hasn't worked for Zorg Rensport with that early stop. But he's not too far off the leading quartet and maybe with his tyres up to temp and pressure, he can get somewhere close to them in the early part of the stint. Core Racing, just beaten to the punch there, coming out of the pit lane at the end of that pit stop. Welcome to those of you joining us after the WEC race on RS1. Thanks to Bruce Jones and Johnny Palmer for their excellent coverage of the final round of the WEC before Le Mans this year. This is the DNLS round seven, the Nymex three-hour race. John Heindorf on RS3 and now RS1 and you join us just after the first hour of racing has been completed and it's been an absolute cracker already the tactics are kicking in leading at the sharp end of the field is Kai Kashuba for team to BMW Bank that was the car that qualified on pole position and Nils Kosh did the first five laps and handed over to Kai relatively early on and they've held on to the lead. But the big winner after the first round of pit stops has been Manfield, the team, team HTP. Jack Sedgwick went into that car even a lap earlier than the pole sitter. Now in second place, although 14 seconds behind the leader. But he's got half a minute on Jim Hertling for Schnitzelam Racing. So the two yellow AMG GT3s are second and third. Alexia Lomas, another big winner. Fantastic first stint. Uh, for Fabian Schiller that brought that car up through the field and Alexi got in again quite early and the bright red Vordersport for get speed car now just 1.3 seconds off a, pool, off a podium position ahead of team Heusingfeld 101 Mats Thorge Hutzfeld who's, who's taken over from Adam Christodoulou behind that it's the Marla Racing team Daniel Lafuente took over from Augustin Canapino who started from the pit lane not entirely certain, but there was two or three cars that didn't get to their grid places in time. And he started from the pit lane after the GT3 cars had gone. The Argentinian doing very well indeed to pull that car up. Seventh position at the moment, Adrenaline Motorsport, Michael Besic. In the 1-2-2 is another 16 seconds further back. And he's got 11 seconds on the BS Competition BMW. Sem uh, Bulekspi, Bulek Bazi, excuse me. 
who's taken over for Baitskavisa, who was up the second at one place on the pit lane rotation and driving really well, but caught up her uh, left rear wheel where the TCR car went, putting a lap on the top four who were battling on the hats and back. In the early part of the lap, that lost her the better part of 20 seconds. Kevin Volk is now behind the wheel of the Phoenix Racing Esport Bright. At yellow with the red stripe, the number 14 car, he's ninth. And those, are, those nine cars are within 95 seconds of each other at the sharp end of the GT3 field. EFP and Andres Habitang, Martin Erlen, Ring Vezet, Sim Racing and Cedric Ting Freiburg House for Phoenix. They are all out of position with other classes between them having had issues, uh, starting from the pit lane as well for some of those cars, but they have not been able to fire their way back through onto the back. So Haberdank in 10th in class, but he's 17th overall with pretty much the whole of the Porsche Cup 2 class behind him. Then it's the Ring Faziad Sim Racing by Nürburgring Esports. Martin Erland, who's been in that car since the start, the green and white Audi. But he's five and a half minutes back to the leader. And then Cedric Tim Freiburg House stopped early in the Phoenix Racing car, the lighter blue with the red stripe. And hit. that's the end of the top dozen in GT3. In the 911 Cup class, Simon Grossman leads for Sim RC Cup 2. They've stopped, as have all the GT3 cars I've mentioned. Asher Racing and Martin Asher, who didn't hand over, I noticed at that pit stop. But Simon Grossman is listed against, uh, excuse me, Marcus Yirak is listed against that car. Martin in the black and dark red machine was having a pretty decent battle with the black and yellow car at the start of the race, but they sort, they both have the same sponsor, Asher Racing, so I'm not sure how real the battles were. Lars has taken, Lars Bermanier has taken over the third place, Violent Racing machine, but there is damage on that car, and that's costing them top speed and a bit of handling right front with some damage on that car. H2 performance are in fourth with Manuel Mayer. It's the black number triple two. And all of these cars again have made their first stops. Behind that in the cup class is Bern Sable for Project GT Eins.de. That's the 285 car. It's the mostly green car with a grey stripe over the roof. Great liveries, yeah? Fantastic. He's about a minute and a quarter away from the leader. Samir Ibrahimi, Renveldon Pro Teams Porsche. He's another 12 seconds further back in the 249. So the bright orange rear wing. Easy to spot. And then in seventh position, which is again the last of the cars in a line on the timing screen, Mario Yuri, the Sim Racing Academy. He's another 23 and a half seconds further back in the 291. Sim Racing Academy colours of uh, grey, red and black. And again, that car's been off the road, clattered the barriers, and that's got left front damage but they have been in the pits and they've had some rectification done on that and it seems to be picking up its pace and looking pretty good. In the GT4 category, actually we'll go to eighth in the Porsche class, the Dernan Motorsport Club AV, Niels Badoff is in eighth position, but he's a couple of cars between him. He's got the uh, one of the GT3s that's out of place between them, so he's actually in 18th position overall for doing the motorsport. Novel Racing, Taku Watanabani, he is in the 24 car, that's the blue machine, and he's got a car between himself as well, hasn't he? Behind him, about another minute further back, Pascal Oh no, hang on a second, that's a GT4 car. So that is that is all of the cup cars, isn't it? That's the nine cup cars. Yes, it is. I see Porsche and I just want to move on. 
So Watanabe for the Novel Racing with Ring Racing in ninth. GT4 starts at 21st overall. And that then is Pasta Pascal Sticks for Core Sim Racing in the 303. In second in that class is Manuel Weibel. Weibel in the RSO, the blue and white car. And Maxi Fritz for Heusingfeld and Sorg Rensport. Those are the four that's been battling. The Porsche Cayman GT4s still ruling the roost in GT4, even after the introduction of the M4 GT4 uh, a couple of months ago now. So sticks leads it out from Weibel for RSO. Again, all have made their first pit stops. And the teal, blue and white, number 397. It's got about five seconds to make up on the leader. Maxi Fritz has taken over the Heisingfeld 301 car in third, which is in the silver, black and red colours of Team Heisingfeld with the big H on the front. And... He's nearly 19 seconds back from the leader, or if you prefer, 13 seconds from second. And he's got five seconds on Sasha Burger for Zorg Rensport Esports, who's in fourth. So they're having a little bit of a lonely run after a pretty feisty opening hour to the race before they made their pit stops. After that in GT4 is the first of the BMWs, and that is Marcel Fassbender for Sim RC, and he's, he was right up there, giving the Porsches a little bit of grief early on, which is, was good to see, but ultimately, the BMW hasn't been able to stay with it, and the SimRC.de Carbon BMW, and I promise you it is a BMW under that colour scheme, although it looks a little less BMW-like unless you're looking at it straight on. It's the trick of the dark at rear hindquarters on that car, I think. Sandro Petroziolo, a Leipart Esports, 353, another yellow car. 40 seconds back from the lead. And then Patrick Hen for Adrenaline in the 334 is another 5.2 seconds further back. We get the TCR in a moment, but let's pick up some battles for position here. Third and fourth, Snitchlam Racing and Team Heusingfeld have been tied together no matter who's in the car. The, at the moment, it's Jim O'Hertling for Snitzelam, then Heusingfeld has Mats Thungus Hufeld, and then it's Alexi Aloma for Vodafone. So that is a three car AMG battle for what amounts to third place at the moment with Kashuba from Sedwick. Sedgwick leading and in second position through the Graciola carousel and still climbing to the top of the circuit into Hua Act. Sweeping through the serpentine sections of the wooded area of the circuit, which is effectively like a street race through a forest, isn't it? No margin for error. Half a car's width, you're on the grass, a full car's width, you've hit the arm court, frankly, if you're offline. Then down to Wittmann, where you get off the ground. Eisbach and down to Brunchen, where the spectators congregate, even on the tourist laps. So easy to drop off the block paving on the exit of that long right-hander and spin up a tyre. These guys are too good for that under the trees left and right picking up speed onto the mighty Flans Garden it's quite bumpy but it's still fast it's just accelerating all the time and again the car and there's a crown on the road here as well and quite often you're going backwards and forwards across the crown on the road and that will unsettle the race car you don't set the race car for a run on the Nordschleife the way you would on a billiard table smooth Grand Prix type circuit 
you've got to have some compliance in the cars because when you're going back over that camber in the middle of the road, the car could quite easily become unsettled. Through the Kleiner carousel and through onto the Gallows Hill corner. A, a fantastically difficult three pressure corner that leads onto the long fast Dottinger Hoa. So you have to get the last part of it right and take as many kilometres or miles an hour as you can onto the long straight. And even though there's a little kink in it where the Bilstein advertising holding is, it's a straight because you're flat through there, you're flat through the bottom of the hill, you're even flat through the first two parts of the tier garden. They've got traffic ahead and the get speed cars picking up a double tour here. Hasn't managed to drag up before the crossover bridge at the Bilstein area. And they'll stay as they are coming to the end of what will be their ninth lap. Expecting 23 lap race at the moment is, uh, is what I'm seeing. I'm going to keep an eye open on that. I'm not sure that we'll get that many through, but all right. Remember, in I racing, the chequered flag, or at least the last lap board, doesn't come out until the lap or the time counter elapses completely. And that could be with just a couple of corners to go or with just a couple of corners gone, depending on where the leaders are. Just a reminder that ahead of this battle for third, fourth and fifth, Kai Kishuba leads for the pole sitting TP, 10 BMW Bank Z4 by 14 and a half seconds from Jack Sedgwick, who's been a real revelation in the man the team, HTP Winwood car. Already with a win under their belts this season. Took two seconds out of the lead at last time around. 8.07 from the BMW, 8.05 for the AMG in second position. It's all about the battle for third, fourth and fifth at the moment. Marcel Fassbender. Best of the BMWs in GT4. Cutting back the gap to the leader, I seem to think, here. So he's got a bit of clear track, and he's using that very nicely indeed. Just out of the pits, it would seem. Put two very quick sectors in at the sharp end of the lap. And yes, he's pulling time back on the leader. And he's only five and a half seconds away from the fourth place Porsche. That in the shape of uh, Maxi Fritz in the Zorg Rennsport. Sorry, Sasha Berger in the Zorg Rennsport. Number triple three. Meantime, that battle for third, fourth and fifth is heading down through the foxhole. So recently, relatively racing, recently having started their lap on the Nordschleifer. In the other classes, we didn't get down to TCR, so let me quickly run down you the TCR running order. Jürgen Franks just put his personal best in of the race with an 86.551. And 8.56.551. He leads by three tenths of a second from Patrick Kabinji for core. And Lars Ball for full send racing is another two seconds further back. And they have all put in quick laps in at the moment. Michael Brautigen for Heusingfeld 404 is another nine and a half seconds back. But he's in a three car train with Niklas Schneider and Renny Kirchhoff for Team Nürburgring. TCR battle. Patrick Hen in the Adrenaline Motorsport BMW. 
in seventh position. Then the T3 Motorsports by Getq. Tobias Berker heading down to the bridge as well. Halfway around the track, or thereabouts at Exmuller. It's a digital Nürburgring Langstrecker series, powered by VCO. The Nymex three hours, round seven. And we continue to cover this season throughout the year in sound vision and enhanced timing here on the Radio Show Limit network of channels. RS1 now joined us and RS3, as we have been from the start, as well as the pictures at radio-show.co.uk or wherever you normally watch this series, because there's a number of places that are taking it. Oh, little mistake there from Jonas Hartmann and the AMC Birkenfeld AV Stabel release. There's the Porsche just wobbling a tiny bit as the battle for third rumbles past, and that will be a big rumble, won't it, with those three AMGs as they head up the hill now, close to Tyler towards the bottom of the Caracciola carousel. Right over to the right-hand side of the track before the turn in, trying to open out the right-hander at Klostertal. Now in the braking area, got to stay off the curbs here, they're really vicious. Max Thurger Hootsfeld took over the car from Adam Christodoulou, it looks like they're breaking up the cars, the, the, the race as close as they can in the three one-hour stints. I'm not sure that helped them, because Adam's lap times went out a little bit on his sixth and seventh lap, whereas the cars who pitted before him got an advantage. He had been up in second place for a while. The get speed car was one of the machines that uh, pitted slightly earlier, that's the bright red AMG, third in that line of cars that are battling. Right there. Fabian Schiller got out of that car at the end of lap four. That's when Alexi took over, which means actually that he hasn't got that many laps to go. He's been five, probably one or two more laps for the Vodafone car. He stopped on the same lap as the Man Filter car in second place, but one lap ahead. Two laps ahead of the two cars that he's battling at the moment. So he's two laps worse off than the Heusingfeld and the Schnitzelheim car that's ahead of him. So still some strategy to play out here in round seven of the DNLS powered by VCO. Alexei Aloma, who I have to say, Fabian Schiller did a great job at the start of the race and carved his way through into the top six, top five in fact. Alexei has taken on the mantle. Still the track temperature up at almost 43 degrees Celsius and that will be playing into the minds of all of these drivers. They'll be in contact with their teams of course and that either they'll have a team manager stroke strategist stroke engineer or one of the drivers who isn't in the seat at the time will be looking at the tyre and fuel numbers side by side coming into the dip at the end of the Dottinger and that's a change for third place as the Heusingfeld car goes round the outside and followed through by the Getspray car, that was so close, so close to absolute disaster as the Getspray car goes through into fourth place. Alexi Aloma, what a great manoeuvre, there was barely enough room to get through before the right-hander at the end of the lap. And it's not enough for Alexi, he's going to go straight into third place. He's never going to get that stopped into turn one. He's going to lose one, possibly both of the places that he was challenging for. Oh, he's just about hung on. That was um, ambitious, shall we say. And fair play 
very fair play to all the drivers there. Heads up stuff. And Mats Thorgert Huxfeld gave him room. Jack Sedgwick's in the pits, by the way. So this is now the battle for second we're talking about. Now that, to me, would seem a little bit early from Sedgwick. He's only done five laps. So four laps for Setsa. Then Sedgwick, five laps. I mean, that's six laps for Sedgwick. OK, six laps for Sedgwick. Right, OK. That's kind of there. They must be thinking then I'm guessing then six another six will take the 16 then another six to 22 they're thinking 22 or 23 laps maximum so they need to put another driver into that car to so the regulations you've got to have two driver changes and six or seven laps is as much as you want to do on a set of tyres we really saw a drop off in Adam Christodoulou's last couple of laps. So Team BMW back by 50, five zero seconds. Then Heusingveld, the 101 car from Vodafone. Team Getspeed, then Schnitzelam Racing, then seven seconds back to the Marla Racing Team who started in the pit lane. Don't know why they weren't on the grid, whether it was a late setup change that they didn't quite get done after qualifying. But it was a great drive through by Augustin Canapino and Danilo Fuente has taken over that car and he's still under a minute away from the leaders. Now in TCR, all Audis of course, Jürgen Frank can virtually smell the aftershave of Patrick Kabinji. He was so close in the draft there for course sim racing now through to the end of the lap complex bouncing touring car style of course you would do in a TCR over the curbs Jürgen Frank been in the car since the start see I've just said that and I'm now not sure let me check that No, it was Felix Luding that started that car, my apologies. So Jürgen coming through to the end of his, of the car's eighth lap, eighth lap, and his, I think that's the end of his third lap that he's been in the car. And sitting in behind them is the third place car of full set racing, the dark coloured, Audi with the green flashes and that is the full send racing last ball behind the wheel of that and this battle was split up for a while when the leading GT3s came through but after the pit stops they've all come back together again fourth is Michael Brautigen Brautigen for Heusingveld another silver and black car He's 12 seconds away from that three-car battle for the lead, and he's got about three seconds on Nicholas Schneider in the Zorg Rensport eSports car. But Schneider has got René Kirchhoff behind him, and there's nothing between those two. The red and white car of Kirchhoff has got some... Uh, ..battle damage on it two little scuffs but the Avia team saw Gren Sport car ahead do you know what I said that and I thought it had some damage on the uh, front of that car maybe it hasn't Marion Hensel for Leiper Esports the yellow and black car is in seven and that's another four seconds further back but still barely 25 seconds in fact not even 25 seconds away from the leader so still plenty of racing to go on there Matthias Sauer WS Racing by Nürburgring there's the big gap there's 21 seconds further back so now you're all of a sudden out there the better part of a minute in the GT tyres liveried car that's the Durham and then behind that the Durham Motorsport car and 
Dominic Spica in the 4.55. And in that category, by the way, at the sharper end of the field, Lars Ball just set that car's new fastest lap of the race. 8.56.744. As Andrea Haberdank has come into the pits in the GT3. That's the EFP car collection. Number 33. Now, that seems... Well, they were off strategy, weren't they? I was going to say that seems a bit early to me. Now, he's done seven laps, that's right. He took off from Jens at the start of that race. So that seven laps is about as much as you'll get, particularly in this heat and with the new fuel regulations. So, let's see who's stopping next. Alomas can't be far away end of this lap or the next lap the Vorderport team gets speed red GT3 which having passed the two cars that were ahead of it has cleared off a wee bit Kai Kashuba I reckon has got one or two more laps Alexi's got one or two more laps the car that has stopped latest in the leading group is the Heusingfeld car in third position as it stands at the moment. Oh, he's the leader in. Well, that's interesting. That's going to make that a six-lap run for Kai Kashuba when he crosses the line. Now, fuel is an absolute because it goes in at a fixed rate for everybody. And then you must have tyres in GT3 when you stop. So, fill to a full tank at this stage of the race. And it'll, the only difference in your pit stop time will be how much fuel you had left in the tank and you were able to save. And I would suggest that Kai, having not had much to fight against, will have been doing a little bit of lifting and coasting was uh, Nils Koch, of course, who started the 107 car. And those are the only two drivers I've got listed against them. So this then becomes the battle for the lead because, the, as I expected, the Vodafone team car has come in. So this is now the battle for the lead going down into turn one, side by side, Heusingfeld. Now, Schnitzelau sitting in second there then with Jim O'Hertling and Max Thorga Hutzfeld is now leading the race and I reckon probably going to go a couple of laps more at least a couple of laps more sorry I've miscalculated that seven he, I reckon he'll go to lap 14, so somewhere near lap, the end of lap 14. They seem to be splitting it up into seven lap stints, which, as I said, for Team Heusingfeld, I, I'm not sure that worked with Adam Christodoulou, but we'll see. I'm still seeing 22 laps. 22 laps, so that's, at the moment, 11 laps to go. It's going to be close between 22 and 23 laps at the moment. So divide that up however you want. This is for the leading cars, of course. RS3, Sound and Vision. RS1 joining us as well. For a full weekend of sport already, both in the real and the virtual world. Six hours of spa earlier, had everything in it everything if you missed it the archive already at radio-show.co.uk catch up on that in hour-long bite-sized pieces midweek motorsport on wednesday rs1 eight o'clock uk time join us for the vco victory lane interviews We're talking a bit of virtual racing as will our Tora radio show looking at the wide world of sim racing on Thursday at 8 o'clock UK time followed by On The Grid 
our affable Australian colleagues looking at motor racing both in their part of the world and across the globe but with a slightly more laid back throw of the shrimp on the barbie type of attitude and I'll say now they say that themselves before I get into trouble at RSL underscore studio Tony Shebeck uh, Shebecki and Richard Creel and the rest of the gang and they've had a busy weekend in Australia this weekend with a triple header at Darwin with the return after about a month or so of Virgin Supercars top of the shop in TCR on the dotting of her Jürgen Frank leads it Patrick Kabinji well he's got a massive room compared to what he had last time but he's still getting the draft he may have run out of revs he might just be on the soft limiter there as he's right in behind the one uh, in, in behind the 476 car down through the gearbox so difficult to get by even with the draft yeah, another car coming in behind them is the 267 that's set third in the Porsche Cup class Lars Bermula for Violent and that could well be a part of the story here in the red and white cup car that's coming as they come to turn two now big sweep to the right hand side by the core racing driver and that I think is very clever just trying to see if there's anything that he can make an advantage of this is Patrick Kabinji I'm talking about Schnitzelau and Marla racing team and ahead of them the Heusingfeld car so this is first second and third Marla going great guns remember starting from the pit lane by Canapino Daniel LaFuente behind the wheel of that car now Lafuente took over from Canapino at the end of lap six. So he's due a pit stop, I reckon, at the end of this lap. So has not yet made his second pit stops. First of the cars that's made the second pit stops, uh, I reckon, is the 107 car. And Kai Kashuba seems to have steered aboard that. So it looks like Kai's going to double stint in the middle of the race and Niels will jump in back in at the end for that Jack Sedgwick looking to do the same thing for Manfield the team HTP Winwood, also having completed their second stop but not their second driver change and you must do two driver changes in GT3 that's the 48 car in fifth position so more than halfway around the 12th lap then for Matt Thorgett, Hoofsfeld, Jim O'Hertley for Schnitzelam Racing. Never been to Schnitzelam, Schnitzel Restaurant. Having not been to Germany for some time, it is on my list. Early in the season, we looked it up and the menu looks phenomenal. All Schnitzel all day, apparently. And anyone who knows me and knows my stature will not be surprised to know that I do like a good schnitzel. I don't mind an average schnitzel, if I'm honest. I just like schnitzel. It's the time of day when I'm getting a bit peckish as well. Had a snack before coming on the air. But I feel the need for some calories and a bit of catch-up sport later on. Been a busy day to day. Motor GP qualifying, don't tell me. First race in... GP2 and GP3, uh, sorry, F2 and F3 today as well. Don't tell me. F1 qualifying I have seen, but I won't spoil it if you haven't. And then I've got the last hour and a half of Nürburgring to catch up on as well, because I was getting prepped for this. Before that, I'd been watching along with Johnny and Bruce. I feel an evening of more motorsport coming on and a more relaxed day tomorrow.
Kashuba then sitting in fourth position, but very handily placed. Probably coming in at the end of this lap behind this battle for second, third, and fourth. Jim or Hertling, Daniel Lafuente, I think will go around again. Great run by the Marla Racing Audi. So two AMG GT3s and an Audi R8 GT3. Oh, now one of them's peeling off and it's the Schnitzel Arm team. Well, I'm a little surprised at that. I am just a little surprised, but maybe they're looking for the performance advantage of a new set of tires. That's very interesting for me, very interesting indeed. So they are splitting it up into six lap runs. We've seen this work before. Kashuba did six laps on his first run and came in for the team BMW. Canapino started from the pit lane and did six laps. La Fuentes now done six laps. So still leading Max Logan Hutzfeld by just half a second for La Fuente as the Schnitzelam racing car has pitted and Fabio Grosser is back in the seat. He's the man who starts, so that's the second driver change as well. So Jamo Hertling came into the pits there at the end of that lap. So surely Marla will come in at the last, at the end of this next lap. But who's going to have the advantage at the sharp end of the field? In the 107, Kashuba will cycle through. I'm just trying to break this down. If Kashuba goes another six laps there, 11 to 17, he may only have a four-lap dash to the end. Still 22 laps being predicted on the computer. So, again, it's all about that last run and who might have the better tyre. You don't want to be caught on all tyres at the end. La Fuente. I think we'll be in at the end of this lap in the Marla Racing Car in second. I'm pretty certain the Heisenfeld 101 leading car will stay out. They did seven laps opening stint for Adam Christodoulou. Oh, pass for the lead down the inside into the top of the foxhole. That is an audacious manoeuvre, sweeping out of the left-hander at Schwedenkreutz and making the pass before Arnberg. What a fabulous manoeuvre that was. Maybe just caught Max Doug at Hertzfeld, just slightly unawares. It is such a quick entry into Arenberg through that tough left-hander where you come across the brow of the hill, just trying to settle the car down. I've seen sometimes even people just trail the brakes a little bit down the top of the hill to keep the car on the ground. And then staying to the right-hand side, letting the car breathe and just sent it up the inside into Arenberg. That was brilliant stuff. Now, that's interesting to me. That's very interesting indeed. That Daniel Lafuente felt the need to get that done. Very interesting indeed. It's now the computer has just gone down to 21 laps, but I'm, I'm absolutely certain at this pace we're going to get 22. But it will change depending on who is in the lead, what their average laps times are. At RSL underscore studio, if you want to get in touch, it's John Hindle. 
we are just over half distance by about 15 minutes. And the Nymex three hour race for round seven of the VCO Digital NLS is boiling up nicely. Legende. Die gefährlichste Rennstrecke der Welt. Der kleinste Fehler wird sofort bestraft. Denn nur wer auf Qualität setzt, kann das Rennen gewinnen. So, all of the big brains are doing their jobs at the moment, whether it's one of the drivers that's not in the seat, whether it's someone who's specifically looking at the software. Hello, by the way, John Hangdorf uh, with you and the action from the seventh round with the DNLS, powered by VCO, it's the Nymex three-hour race on the Nordschleifer, of course. Season building up nicely, isn't it? Lovely weather. And battles going on at the sharp end of the field with the first and second place cars coming down the Dottiger Hur and La Fuente, I reckon, coming in at the end of this lap in the Marla Racing Audi, which started from the pit lane, was not on parade as the grid formed halfway down the Dottiger Hur, right by, whereby you come out for the tourist foreign so let's see if that Marla Racing Williams eSport car peels off to the right it does indeed my reading of the software has done its job computer doing all the work all I've got to do is interpret it which leaves it open to human error of course through has gone Max Dogger Hutzfeld who I reckon will do another couple of laps and Kai Kashub has just put a new fastest lap of the race in in going up to second place on that lap it's down to an 8 or 1 6 6 7 that's not that far away from qualifying pace track temperature still hot 42 degrees Celsius 27 in the air virtually no change since the start of the race as La Fuente now with nine laps to go to the end of the race is what the computer says and it looks as though he's staying in the race and behind the wheel fuel going into that car at the moment i haven't seen it go up on its jacks but you can't double stint tires in gt3 you have to take full four tires and we've seen people caught out by that haven't we at the start of the season meantime 
in TCR. Jurgen Frank has been caught by Patrick Kabinji. Well, he was about three laps or four laps ago, and they've been circulating with about room for maybe half an Audi between them uh, for the last couple of three laps. Sim RC TCR from Corsim Racing TCR, and they've got 15 and a half seconds on Michael Brautigan for Team Heusingfeld 404 in third place. And then there's 51 seconds back to Nick Schneider for Zorg Rennsport, and then it's Lucas Cowper for Leipert Esports. He's made another stop there, hasn't he, for the Leipert car? Let me just check that out on my pit stop guide. Because that means he's dropped back. Yeah, he's taken over from Marion. So he'll take that car to the end. Two five lap stints for Leipert. And again, this is all about tyres and splitting up the race into manageable chunks for the tyres. What they'll probably be doing in TCR is only changing the front tyres at the driver's middle stop. So leaving the rears on, let the rears do 10 laps and you change the fronts at each stop. It's very, very hot on the track. Very hot indeed. This is quality stuff and these two have been at it for such a long time. Patrick Kabinji. He's been right up underneath the rear wing so many times going down the Donegal Hurt, but for some reason just hasn't had the revs to go by. Actually, and I know the guys who are cutting the pictures are listening to this, wouldn't mind having an onboard next time to get onto the long to get home because I've got a feeling that Patrick is actually running out of revs and that he hasn't got anything more to pull out and sweep by in some respects you need to time it just right to get that effect in the hole in the air that the TCR car ahead of you is making and sometimes it's better to be a little bit further back through the gallows hill corner and then use the hole of the straight to drag up and then dive out to the right-hand side just as you're coming in the braking area for the twisties at the end of the lap. Now, having to make way for the Porsche Cup car in fourth position, that's Mario Jury in the Sim Racing Academy red team. So, oh, that's loud, the pass. Well, well. Much easier than we thought, as the Sim RC car was allowing Jury to go through on the Schwalbenschwanz, the uh, Kleiner Carousel. It all happened, and what an anticlimax! Unless, of course, the Sim RC car, the yellow and black car, does what we were talking about. Here comes the drag. Here comes the extra pace. It looks like nothing's going to happen. And then all of a sudden, here comes the second place car. That's beautifully timed, but he's going to have a Porsche right there. He's pulled out in front of him, but that might just make it happen. He'll get an extra little bit of draft from the Porsche behind him. And there is a perfect, perfect illustration of what I was talking about. I wonder if that was then deliberate by... Jürgen at the front of the field, Jürgen Frank for Sim RC. He fell out of the groove. Is he coming into the pits? Yes, he is. They both are. They're both coming into the pits. Well, that was a perfect illustration, wasn't it? He fell out of the groove coming through the Kleiner Carousel as he had to let Jury through. But didn't lose his cool, used the draft. Slipped out to the right-hand side when he got the run and made the pass. Still comes into the pits in the lead. And Michael Brautigan, by the way, for Heusingfeld 404 team, has pitted as well. So Nicholas Schneider should be the next car around. And we'll probably see him into the pits as well. Really quick pit stops.
for those cars. It looked as well as if the uh, Porsche that was involved in that pitted as well from right in front of them. Well, once in a while, you know, I say something and then it happens. Check it, do that with the lottery numbers. Right, let's remind you what's going on at the top of the shop. Kai Kashuba's just put another fastest lap of the race in last time around. Matt Thurger Hutzfeld leads by just eight seconds at the moment and needs to make a pit stop. Adam Christodoulou started, did seven laps. Matt Thurger has now is now on his seventh lap and I reckon will pit and hand the car over to Jan Santowski at the end of this one. So they're thinking 21, 22 laps, aren't they? Three seven-lap stints. I've got bad news for them. The computer's back to seeing 22 again now. It, it'll cycle between them, depending on what the lap times are and who's in the lead and who's just stopped. There's been virtually no change in the track temperature and the air temperature, so tyres are still taking a little bit of a hammering. The TCR battle is rejoined pretty much where we left it off, except Kabinji has got to the head of the field ahead of Jürgen Frank after their pit stop. Brautigan is still in third, but is now 22 seconds behind. Nicholas Schneider from Zug Rensport is in fourth. Fifth is Lucas Cowper for Leipert. And then right in behind them, it's my timing screen just decides to go a bit strange. No, it's Rennie Kirchhoff who's right in behind Ker Cowper. Yeah, it is. Team Nürburgring. Exactly as I thought. So, Heusingfeld 101 leading, but about to stop. I reckon stopping now, in fact. In fact, has just pulled into the pit lane. So, disregard what I'm about to tell you, because it means Kai Kashuba has gone through into the lead. Because La Fuente and Hutzfeldt have both stopped that time around. Jack Sedgwick then will go up into second place and has done as he crosses the line in the Manfilters HTP Windward car. So that's the second place car going into the first corner. It's Phoenix Racing, Kevin Volk, who should be coming through any time now. No, he's pitted. So he's into the pit lane. So then it's Vodafone team get speed, Alexi Aloma. Now, what's his laps? Well, he's just pitted. So can he go to the end? I don't think he can. So it's all going to be some short stints towards the end of this. Aloma's got up into third. Lafuente, I reckon, now fourth. Santowski for Heusingfeld in fifth position, but already a minute 20 away from Kai Kashuba. And that's everyone now doing two pit stops. Can Marla Racing go to the end? Oh, it's going to be close, you know. It's going to be very close for Marla Racing. Depends whether it's 21 or 22 laps. If it's 22, they can't. So they'll do a short stop. So expect to see Eloma to another couple of laps and maybe then hand it back. Excuse me, Lafuente do another three or four laps and hand it back for a six or five lap stint at the end by Augustin Canapino. That would be my guess. It's a guess at the moment. The computer can give me all of the stops and time to run, etc. Can't read the minds of the people doing the tactics at the moment. Great battle for fifth and sixth, proving that you don't have to be battling for a podium position to have some fun. Rene Kirchhoff looking at the back end of Lucas Cowper for Leipzig with the team Nürburgring red 
and white Audi sitting in behind. The down to X Muller at the bottom of the hill. Across the bridge and just break the where that access road comes in from the right hand side. And then where you come on, used to be able to get on there as a tourist lap, do a sort of a half lap. The second half of the circuit. Coming up now towards the very frustrating Bergwerk. Take as much speed as you can there because she's climbing all the time now. Heading up towards the mighty Kesselchen. Went through there. Maybe 993, 135 miles an hour. And the car was skipping around a bit there, I've got to tell you. Side by side. Heading up towards close to town. That's brave. You can do it, but you need help from the person that you're racing against. Ah, oh, smashing stuff from both the guys there. Really, really smashing stuff. Love to see that. That's a change for fifth then in class. Team Nurberg Ring taking that position. Just on an hour and three minutes to go. Check that, just on an hour to go. The wrong part of the clock there. So, from here, eight laps, seven laps to go, surely, in an hour. Just going to depend where the leader is. It's going to be 21 or 22, I tell you, this is going to be tight for some of these drivers. I'm loving this. We have seen earlier in the season when the temperatures were right, and in fairness, there was a little more that fuel for the GT3 cars. We have seen a 24 lap race. Should have asked Bruce before he clocked off the spa coverage when that was and who it was that did it. But I'm certain we had a 24 lap race earlier on, but we're not going to get the 24 laps for the leaders this time around. So the question is, has Marla Racing got it right? If it's 21, they're going to be... Nah, they can't do it. They've got... And besides which, actually, I've just realised they need to do another driver change. So they have to stop anywhere. They've got to change the driver twice. So driver A swaps to driver B, drops, swaps to driver C, is fine. Or driver A swaps to driver B. Driver B stays in, driver A gets back in again, is fine too. So I say inside the last hour now Jan Sentowski putting in some good times in the Heusingfeld 101 in fifth position where are the battles I hear you ask well sharp in edge of the field at the moment there's a decent scrap going on for Fuente Sentowski battling away uh, behind Alexia Loma for Vodafone team get speed so that's third, fourth and fifth. The two, the 186 and the 101. I think that's going to be broken up shortly, is it, for pit stops? No, not necessarily. We might see them having a bit of a scrap. The Fuente cannot afford for that to get any kind of physicality amongst it. It's been caught just a little bit by Sentowski. Porsche Cup. Bert Seibel is but Siebel has got Tobias Roof 
right up his tailpipes in a battle for fourth and fifth. 285 and 267. It's a decent scrap at the moment. And this Team Nürburgring versus Leipert. Still under a second between those two. Now, Nicholas Last has just pitted for Sim Racing Academy Red. I think he's going to try and go at the end from here in the uh, GT4 cast class. There'll be a few people thinking about the last stops. Kai Kashuba coming round in the lead of the race has 56 minutes to go and has to get his teammate Niels Kosh back in it. Jack Sedgwick doing the middle stint. I think one more lap for him before Sindra Setsas gets back in the car. Alexia Loma, I think he'll go another couple or three laps and put Fabian Schiller in for a four or five lap dash at the end. He's got a bit of a sc scrap going on there though, as I mentioned, La Fuente is closing in and he is dragging Jan Sentowski. So Vodafone, Marla Racing Team, William Z Racing Squad and Heusingfeld, second, third and fourth on the front straight together now. And as they cross the line, they all stay out. Heusingfeld, Sentowski. And they've done their driver changes. So if they can get that car to the end without stopping again now, and Sentowski's only been in it for a lap. Christodoulou did seven. Hubsfeld did seven. And if it is only 21, it depends how much time they're going to lose in that last couple of laps when the tyres are starting to go away. Track temps come down by about a degree, but still over 40 degrees Celsius, which is going to put some pressure on the tyres of the big AMG GT3. Just I'm, I'm in a quandary here. Sorry, stop talking for a moment there because the old cogs were ticking over as to just what we're likely to see of the cars at the front of the field. The first car that's done its two, its two driver changes and therefore, in theory, could go to the end if they've got the fuel is the Heusingfeld 101 that was started by Alan Christodoulou, Max Thorber, uh, Thorger at uh, Hutzfeld, and now with Sentoski at the wheel. Third of the three cars that are battling for third position. Everybody ahead of that must make one more stop for fuel and or to get another driver in. So, it's all about, it is all about just how much fuel is in that Heusingfeld car. Simon Grossman's in the pits from the lead of the Porsche Cup class. Martin Asher, four seconds behind. He'll go through. Or is he going to... No, he's gone through. Martin Asher's doing it on his own. Not the same rules in the other categories, of course. So Martin, who did have... Marcus Yiddach listed, but we've seen Martin do the full three hours himself in the past.
Hello to Monster Jeff. Good to know that you are listening in and watching. We're in a little bit of a holding phase at the moment to wait for some final pit stops. And then the stagger unwinds as we talk that about that athletics analogy in the past, haven't we? Who's got the tactics right? I questioned earlier on, I've got to say I did, I questioned Team Heusingveld going the full seven laps with Adam Christodoulou. Yes, the fuel was there, but it looked like the tyres are taking a pounding in the heat of the first laps of the race and in the heat of the sunlight on the track as well. Shadows are lengthening on the circuit. And then it's taken over by Max Doger, Hutzfeld, seven laps. Sentowski now behind the wheel. And if the race goes to just 21 laps, then of course they can make it. They can make it. And my computer is wavering between 21 and 22 laps to go. Kai Kashuba has to stop again. So what's the gap then between Kashuba and Sentowski? A minute and 21. I don't think Sentowski's going to end up in the lead here, even if he can go to the end, but there's a podium on for sure. There's a podium on for Team Heusingfeld. By the time you've done the pit stop, the tyre changed and filled the fuel. Now, Kai can stop pretty much at any time after the end of the next lap and be certain to go at the end, even if it does go at the 22, he'll have to put Nils Kosh back in again. But that, that is the defining factor. He'll want to know that even if it goes that extra lap, they've got the fuel for it. So even if it goes to 22. So... Next lap on the one after, I would suggest for the leader. So it's fuel and then the time taken for the tyres. And how many get through? Sedgwick has the same issues. Got to get Sindri sets us back in that car. Got to do the second driver change. Now, Jack, he got in at the end of I reckon lap 10. I reckon he'll pit at the end of this one. So I reckon the man filter car in second will pit at the end of this lap. And that'll be a nice run to the end. He, well, I suppose he could go one more. I reckon he's probably got the fuel for one more. It depends what he thinks the pace of Sindra, Sindra Setsas is and how Sindra is feeling. Ford of Fon Bala, Heusingfeld. Working quite nicely when you think for Sentowski and the Heusingfeld, the third of the three cars that are heading onto the Dottinger now because he's getting a draft. So he's saving a little bit of fuel. So if there is a fuel issue there, he may be able to turn it up on the last lap or so. As they all sweep past the TCR Audi time that one right as well to make sure you don't ping the Audi as you go through Yannick Danish is back in the 423, Schneider's been in and out in the Audi new personal best for Sedgwick in the man filter the car as Nils Koch is in back in the team BMW back car so they have stopped so Kai Kashuba then well a 6 and a 5 for Kashuba so these cars are coming through. Who peels off? None of them. None of them. And Kosh is not rolling yet. Sedgwick, one more lap, and he's turning it up. Sedgwick, one more lap. I, yeah, got to be one more lap then. So through goes Vodafone in second, Marler in third, Heusingfeld in fourth. So where does Niels Kosh come out? He comes out in fifth position. Five seconds behind Sentowski, but on new tyres. Now, 
I don't think Sintowski in the Heusingfeld car will have the tyres at the end to fight. Ooh, a bit of a damage to bonnet area on the Get Speed Vodafone cars. They go into the hairpin on the Grand Prix circuit. But he's going to have a decent gap, isn't it? It's about a minute and 30 seconds to get your pit stop done. He's going to have a decent gap to everybody else. Martin Asher back at the lead of Porsche Cup 2 ahead of Cla Claudius V. Those two are back at it again. Manuel, Me Manuel Mayer at H2 Performance in third and Tobias Ruff of Ireland in fourth. In GT4, Pascal Stix for course in racing leads by 24 seconds from Nils Carsten. Carstensen for Team RSO and Zorg Rensports got Sasha Berger back behind the wheel then it's Fassbender the first of the BMWs in GT4 in fourth in the TCR class Browdy can lead by 15 seconds for Heusingfeld ahead of course Marius Gollenbeck and Felix Ludings back the qualifier and Paul Sitting driver who led off for Sim RC TCR René Kirchhoff for Nürburgring team in fourth position and those well all of those cars down the lead point as well Lucas Cowper back behind the wheel of the 453 they're all separated by just a few seconds each but the interest at the front of the field where the man filter team HTP Winwood, a winning team this year Jack Sedgwick at the head of the field by 38 seconds I reckon he picks the end of this lap to hand back for a five lap stint which is exactly what Sindra Setsas did at the start of the race Actually, I think Sindra might have only done four but I think it'll have to be five this time around Eloma in second but needs to stop La Fuente in the Marla Audi the Williams Esports team Augustin Canapino to get back in that car to take it to the end after starting it from the pit lane. So it's already been a great run for the Marla Racing Audi. And then the big unknown, the big, there might as well be a huge question mark hovering in the ether above Team Heusingfeld. With Santowski in the dark grey, red and silver car. May just have enough fuel to go to the end Will he have the pace to fight off the cars who've stopped? And who, of course, must get new tyres? The tyres means more time in the pit stop. Good news for Santowski. But they will be quicker and have more tyre performance. That's bad news. So which one outweighs the other? Maybe they've played a blinder. Three seven-lap stints. I didn't think it could work. I didn't think it could work. Adam, I apologise, mate. Krista Dulu started the race for them, put in a really good stint. Tremendously, uh, tremendously successful and consistent. Best around the early eight minute marks, eight or five, eight or six, I think eight or seven maybe, his best lap. And his average was pretty much that as well, to be honest, all very seven laps. Hello to Get Speed, I know you're tuned in. I'm sure you won't tell me on Twitter at RSL underscore studio. Uh, Alexi comes in this lap, end of this lap or the next one. Alexi's got good pace at the moment. He could give Fabian Schiller just a little four-lap dash to the end, maybe. Five or four laps to the end. Meantime, Heusingfeld. Santowski seems to have pressed the go button. Wasn't expecting that. I thought he would just sit in there, knows the cars ahead have got to stop. Does he feel he's being held up, or was there just an opportunity there? But he's dropped back at the base of the hill, heading up to the main carousel. Oh, this is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Just checking the other classes to keep our eyes on what's going on at the front of the field. Sedgwick will be coming down towards the 
end of the lap. Track temperature is falling, and that will help those like the Marla racing car who are trying to make their tyres last to the end. But it's danger time at the moment as they're having to pass traffic. And just to point out that behind Heusingfeld, Nils Koch for Team BMW Bank has closed in. It was over five seconds. It's now down to three, and he has made his last pit stop. So there's a, there's a query on whether 101 will go at the end, but 107 definitely is going to the end. So he has made his last pit stop. Sintowski, Jan Sintowski in the Heusingfeld 101 may be able to go to the end, but there's a question mark about pace and making that last. There's no worry about fuel on the Paul sitting 107 car, now sitting in fifth position. And the top three do have to pick. I'm watching the timing screen to see if Sedgwick peels off. Also to see what happens here. This is not good news for Heusingfeld. They were getting held up there through Flansgard, heading down towards the Swallowtail area of, this, of the circuit. Down towards Falbertrans. big Mercedes AMG motor stroking the car onto the Dottinger Hur. The gap now. Oh, it's gone out a bit. 3.7 to Niels Cork as he catches the traffic. And on the Nürburgring, Nordschleifer as in endurance racing as a whole. Traffic giveth and traffic taketh away. Sedgwick has come into the pits. So that's his last stop. So where does the man filter car come back out? Watch out for the bright yellow car coming out the pits. Does the Lomas go into the pits for Vodafone? Or does he go one more to give his teammate one fewer laps to do at the end? Schiller will get back into that car, surely, to finish it off. Sedgwick in the pits. And Setsas has got into that car, but it's not rolling. It's not rolling. Crucial now to see what happens to... Alexia Lomas has gone through. Lomas has gone through. La Fuente has gone through. Sentowski's gone through. And Setsas is not out of the pits yet. Nils Cox goes through. Four seconds now, the gap between Sentowski and Nils Cox. That's the battle for me for the lead. Sentowski and Nils Cox as the effective battle for the lead with, yes, just under 40 minutes to go, but They've got to be going to the end right now. They've got to be going to the end. And it's going to be so tight for Sentowski. So, a bit of drafting going on further down the field for P8. And Baitskevisa is going to lose out to the Phoenix racing car. Kevin Volk drags through so Alexi Aloma at the front of the field and the get speed guys well they know what they're doing but they're not telling they've gone through onto another lap La Fuente has gone through onto another lap Sintowski's gone through we know he's going to the end now has to that's the only choice now if they run it to far on fuel and they need an eighth lap I don't think they'll get it and they'll have to pit for a splash but of course they have to take you tyres as well if that's the case that'll drop them out of contention 3.8 seconds between Sentowski and Nils Kost. that's third and fourth at the moment but it will become first and second by Skavisa BS competition BMW was going so well earlier on contact with a TCR in the hats and back while she was second lost her 20 seconds or so didn't hit the barriers though extraordinarily but there was damage to the left rear of the BMW from BS competition
got to love these races that are not encumbered by flags, slow zones, code 60 areas, etc. Aloma is on his seventh lap now. Aloma then on his seventh lap now. And he did seven laps last time around. At the end of this lap then, there will be four laps to go. Once again, the computer can't make up its mind. Predicting ahead, 22 laps now, which is awful news for Heusingfeld. Awful news. But don't forget the two cars that are leading need to stop. And that might just be enough to knock that back to 21. That would put Sentowski in the lead, of course. When they stop, his bigger problem is Nils Kosh behind him in the BMW Bank 107 car. Because that car will surely have the pace to run him down and then that becomes the car that will determine if we go on to an extra lap or not it's all going to depend where the clock runs out all going to depend where the clock runs out and with just three and a half four seconds between Sintowski and Koch you, you, you can't try and manipulate that if it's 30 seconds you can slow down a bit great run by the way for Marcel Fassbender who is now leading the GT4 category, not just the BMWs. He's ahead of Matti Sipola, and he has just put that car and the BMWs in GT4's fastest lap in 8.43.1 as he's gone by Matti Sipola in the pit lane. So pa Pascal Stix gave up the car, but Fassbender will lose that position further back down the field because he owes us one more pit stop I don't think he can go to the end in that BMW Let's just check that in the 376 Ooh, maybe maybe he can I think that's a race I think that might be a race to the end Fassbender did a 7 and a 7 and he won't have to do a seven to the end because the leader will lap him again. So Marcel Fassbender. Fassbender in the BMW number 376 from Simar C. That's the first time I've seen a BMW leading the GT4 class. And he's got 10 seconds on Sipola, who's just come out of the pits, having just got back into that car. And that is a race for the BM for the GT4 win. Porsche versus BMW, or should I say BMW versus Porsche? with Marcus Eichhorn, uh, who is also good to the end of the race, in another BMW in third, and then Patrick Lankow will finish off the race for the RSO Team 397. So just looking through some of the other runners out there at the moment. Sentowski, under three seconds ahead of Kosh. That's third and fourth, but the effective battle for the lead. Eloma and La Fuente, a second between them. They'll both pit again before the end of the race. So that's going to be a battle of the pit, the virtual pit crew. But unfortunately, everything is going to be timed. So Fassbender then leads GT4 for BMW and for SimRC.de. Second place, the first of the Porsches, Sipola, on his outlap. He's just got back in the car and he's got now just under 10 seconds to chase down that leader. This would be a famous victory. We've been watching the BMWs. They haven't seemingly on a one lap pace, had the pace of the BMWs, uh, of the Porsches, excuse me. Icon then, third for Leipert Esports in GT4. So BMWs first and third, Porsches second and fourth, with Patrick Lankow for Team RSO 397 in the teal blue, dark blue and white centre section of that car.
this is a proper race now. Simple has got to get a wiggle on. Just done the fastest sector three of anybody in the GT4 race. Took a full second out of the car he's chasing. Christian Bug is in fifth for Zorg Gren Sports. So that's another Porsche. The BMW gradually being worked on. People getting used to the driving style. Very different front engine car, of course, versus the mid engine, very low slung engine in the Cayman 718. If you've ever looked at the Cayman or a Boxster and you open the hatch where you think the engine's going to be and it's a luggage compartment. So you look underneath at the back and you can't see the engine. Flat six sitting very, very low in the middle of the car. Felix Ludwig's on a chase as well at the minute in TCR. He's got a 2.6 gap to make up, 2.6 second gap to make up to Marius Gollenbeck. So it's caught from Sim RC, then a big gap back to Heusingfeld, 40 seconds further back, Marcel Tai. Then Yannick Danich is only 5.6 seconds further back from a podium position. It's going to be some very interesting interviews at the end. Because I need to hear the stories of these races. Need to need that, hear that. La Fuente leads then. So there's been a pit stop at the front of the field as the Marler Racing Team leads Heusingfeld. So the Get Speed car has come in. Fabian Schiller is into it and he will run the car at the flag, but he's dropped down to fifth position. So Marler Racing stayed out for another one. La Fuente pushing his luck here, surely. Well, I only see Canapino handing to Lafuente, so I reckon Canapino's got to get back in that car. Unless there's been a change in the regulations. And I have to say, I didn't notice that. But it used to be that there was two... Had to be two driver changes. Even then, Lafuente is going to be struggling on fuel I can't believe he can make it I reckon he'll have to pit at the end of this lap that will put Canapino in possibly for three stroke four laps depending on the pace that he sets and that then will leave Sentowski in the lead with Nils Koch in second and Sindre sets is charging for Manfilter in third he's got 40 seconds to make up in the on the leader and with under half an hour to go now this is going to be an extraordinary run to the line it's all about who has the performance at the end of the race and who has the tyres and I still think that Heusingfeld may have played a blinder here may have played an absolute blinder Wherever you are listening or watching, do not go away. Block out the next 36, 37 minutes because it could go as long as that. And stay by your computer, your phone, whatever you're watching or listening on because round seven of the DNLS by VCO is by no means finished yet. Legende. Die gefährlichste Rennstrecke der Welt. Der kleinste Fehler wird sofort bestraft. Denn nur wer auf Qualität setzt, kann das Rennen gewinnen.
Well, hearing some real drama down in TCR, the full send TCR number 485. Pedals on the driver rig failed. Car suffered damage with an impact. Quick repair meant a five minute penalty, not into contention, but they were very, very close indeed and we're in with a chance. Thanks to our bath driver who tweeted at RSL underscore studio with that really bad look on them. But that was a breakage on the rig, on the pedals on the rig. So the real world side of things causing them problems in the virtual when they had a decent strategy. They'd been there or thereabouts in TCR all race. TCR at the moment led by Marius Gollenbeck for core racing by just a second and a half from Felix Luding. Marcel Tai 40 seconds further back in GT4. Still Fassbender leading by just 3.8 seconds now over the Porsche of Matty Sippler. BMW versus Porsche in the last half an hour in GT4. It's fantastic. We've not had this before in the cup class for Porsches. Claudius Veed and Martin Asher have been at it all race. In fact, those two cars have been for SimRC and Asher Racing, but it's nearly 10 seconds between those two at the moment. But at the front of the field is where the intrigue and drama is. Jan Santowski is now only half a second behind Daniel Fuente, who's leading for Marla Racing Team. The Marla Racing Audi started in the pit lane. They didn't get on the grid on time, so started at the back of the first group of cars after they'd all gone through. They're on the Donninger Hoa now. I reckon Lafuente will be peeling off at the end of this lap to let Augustin Canapino finish the race. So the Heusingfeld car doesn't need to go past here and has got 5.3 seconds on Niels Kosh for the Team BMW Bank. Now, very interesting. Does the Audi peel off? Go to the right-hand side, stay to the right-hand side. No, of course, on to another lap. So pushing really pushing as hard as they can. That's 19 laps completed for La Fuente. They'll complete 20 laps ne last next time around and that will be the seventh lap of a stint for La Fuente. And I, I, he must stop at that point. He can't have enough fuel for eight. And besides which, Canapino's not been back in the car. They've only done one driver change. So, this is then the battle for the lead. So, does La Fuente have a go? Does La Fuente crack on? He would have thought the danger was from Koch behind. I suppose it depends, and he'd be being told by his team. You know he will. The gap at the moment to Koch and the BMW, which was on pole, 4.8 seconds at the last split. And I'm getting... Split by split updates here. The Vodafone, uh, the man filled the team HTP, Sidra Setsas, possibly on for a podium, depending what happens with La Fuente. 38 seconds off the lead, 32 seconds now off Nails Kosh and doing really good splits. So that's a gap we're going to have to watch as well. With still. 21 laps remaining, 21 uh, minutes remaining, but in Nürburgring, that's three laps, isn't it? It's all going to come down to when time expires. And in iRacing, when the time expires, that immediately becomes the last lap. So if the leader is on the Dottinger Hoa, then they've got three or four corners and, they're there, and they're then they're finish the race to check the flag will come out if the leader is on the Grand Prix circuit they're going to have to do another lap of the Nürburgring Nordschleife La Fuente then under pressure. 
all coming, all unravelling, all winding out. The stagger, the tactics, the fuel, the tyres, the concentration, all coming to a head in the last now 19 minutes and 50 seconds. Marvellous stuff. Round seven of the virtual competition organisation, the VCO NLS. Nymex three hours. What entertainment this has been. Finally, the track temperature drops down below 40 degrees, but it's only down to 39.4. Just reflecting the virtual time of day at the Nürburgring. Race moved back this afternoon because there was so much, uh, I think, real world racing going on. It's decided to move it back away from Formula One and WEC and MotoGP and everything else that is going on at the moment. At RSL underscore studio, what's your thoughts then? Who's got the tactics right? As Michael Bessage comes into the pits from Adrenaline from eighth position in GT3, that'll be his last pit stop and the car's last pit stop. Still the battle in GT4 and it's right there now, the battle in GT4 for the lead. Half a second between the BMW that leads and Matty Sipola in second place. So Sipola has caught Fassbender and with still a couple or three laps to go there, that one is yet to be sorted out. Fassbender for Sim RC, Core Sim Racing for Sipola. Marcus Heichhorn for another BMW in third. He's only 25 seconds further back. And then Patrick Lankow, nine seconds away from a podium. Still watching the lead in at the front of the race, of course. I'll keep an eye on those splits. Two tenths of a second now between Fassbender and Sipola in the GT4 category. So that's the 376 and the 303 right at it. We've not seen the BMW. This certainly haven't seen it. This competitive. Meanwhile, in TCR, things are hotting up as well as Gollenbach has been caught by Felix Luding, as I suggested, Luding might be on attack mode, and he's right up the tailpipes now of Gollenbach. And the lead has changed in GT4. Simple has gone through on Icon. Is there gonna be a change as well in another class? We're inside the last 18 minutes, and we've just had a change for the lead in one class. We might see a change for the, a lead in the other, and at the overall head of the race, it's still only a second between first and second. Edge of the seat stuff, breathless. TCR battle. Just over the bridge now, down at Adana. Beginning to head back uphill. Meantime, the lead of the race. Battling through traffic here, and this could be danger time for any of them. Over Vipperman and diving through the sweeping sections of the circuit to one line track here. Got to be so careful going past even a TCR car. Brilliant stuff by all the drivers. Actually, that was coming on to Flansgarden, excuse me, for the leaders. They'll be catching the TCR battle fairly shortly as well. They're just on the Dottinger Hur now. So, change in GT4. Oh, it's gone back again. Fassbender's got back in front. So Fassbender's got back ahead of Sibola. What a cracking battle that is. In GT4, you need eyes everywhere on this huge circuit. Heusingfeld in second. Surely this time La Fuente will come in. La Fuente. Now coming to complete lap number 20 he got in the car the end of lap 13 so this will be a seven lap stint he has done a seven lap stint in this in this car but i can't believe he's going to try and stretch it further and canapino has not been back in the car for his second stint 
end of the lap. We'll find out in about 40 seconds, less than that. Does the Marla Racing Car, which started in the pit lane, I know I've said it before, but I find that extraordinary that it's in with a chance. Yes, it does, Pete. And through goes Heusingfeld. So Heusingfeld now goes through to complete 20 laps. And start. Oh, well. One lap or two laps. At the end of this one, it's going to be tight. There's 14 minutes to go. Heusingfeld might have just, just, unfortunately, mistimed it. There's going to be another lap, isn't there? After this one. It's been hovering between 21 and 22. But with 14 laps to go, and 14 seconds, 14 minutes to go, excuse me, there will be one more at the end of this one. So it swings back to BMW, I reckon. And the car now in second place. Niels Koch, maybe not pushing anymore. Sindra sets us. He's not making any inroads. 20 seconds back from sets us. There goes Augustin Canapino out of the pits. Now Canapino, new tyres and a run to the end. It's got to be maximum attack for the Argentinian. They've got to the push to make sure that it goes that extra lap. Meantime, Core and Sim RC are battling for the lead. And here comes the Schnitzelheim car to go by them. Was that the man filter car actually might have been going past them? Yeah, I think it was. That was Setsas going by them. Right under the rev limiter by the leader. In TCR on the Dottinger Hoer. Core Racing. Sippler's back in the lead in GT4. The lead's changed four times on that lap in GT4. Sippler now with a mighty half a second lead on Fastbender. But this is going to be by far the best result by a BMW in GT4. Certainly that I see. Stand to be corrected on that. Hello to Monster Jeff on Twitter. Loves the more aggressive st strategies like Nick Tandy uses in real life. Doesn't always work out, of course. It was my team, he says. I would tend to be more conservative. Fastbender then at the bottom of the hill. Leading up to the Cracciola Carousel. And he's got Sipola right in front of him as they drop onto the concrete and rattle their fillings through the long left-hander. Oh, and Fassbender's on the grass for a moment and loses a bit of time. <laughs> Dropped a couple of seconds there. Wonder if he's starting to lose the tyres on that BMW. Just got on the power a tiny bit early. Popped out like a cork. And a boy's hit the barrier. He actually hit the barrier. On the right-hand side, we've all done it. We've all done it. Now, has he knocked the two out? Just got on the throttle. He was a bit greedy. What, half a second too early? Oh, can't believe that. He's driven such a good race. Marcel Fassbender may have just thrown away any chance of a BMW victory in GT4 in that moment. Thank goodness we saw it. There's damage to the right front wheel arch and if we can see it he'll certainly be able to feel it sometimes we can't see it and you still feel it yeah his pace has gone off oh goodness me the drama the drama at the end of this race he's dropped four seconds he's in real strife now he should hold on a second he's got 31 seconds back to Patrick Lankow in the RSO 397 who will be getting the hurry up he's got Five seconds on Christian Bug, who's got ahead of Sandro Petrozielo in the next BMW. So it's Porsche's at the moment, third and fourth. Are Porsche going to rest back the podium? Ten minutes to go. It's the podium in GT4 there. Oh, Marcel! 
He's going to be so annoyed with himself at the end of this. So at the front of the field, Adam Christodoulou led off having qualified the 101. Then Max Thurger Hutzfeld took over. Seven laps for Adam, seven laps for Mats. This will complete the seventh lap for Jan Sentowski. At the front of the field, have they got one more lap of fuel? We've seen eight laps before, but not for a wee while. It's going to be mighty. He's got five seconds on Nails Kosh in second place. Nails got plenty of fuel in that car. La Fuente, having just stopped, he's fine. Sindri sets us, he'll be on full attack. So will Fabian Schiller. But they're all quite a long way back. Schiller's got a minute and 21. A minute for Augustin Canapino, who's in the Marla Racing car, sorry. Then sets us 41 seconds. He's not gaining on the two ahead of him. And meantime, the battle in TCR <laughs> continues for Gollenbeck and Luding. They've got 38 seconds on Marcel Tai for Husing Veld 404 team in third. Down through Carl and Hard for the battling TCR leaders and they've got another TCR car to put a lap on in a little while. Canapino is lighting up my timing screen. Green, 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 purple. Green, green, purple. Green. So Canapino knows there's something on here. He's under a minute away from the leader, 17 seconds away from Setsas at another what would be another podium position for the Marla Racing Team in this one. They've had a couple of really good results this year when they've had problems. Remember, they got slammed into the wall early doors and that was an early pit stop for them in one of the first races of the season. This time they've had to start from pit lane and drive the wheels off that Audi. on the long Dottie Gehoa. As opposed to the short Dottie Gehoa, which doesn't exist. On the Dottie Gehoa, Sentowski then, and this is the race right here. Does he peel off to the right? In which case he is going to drop out of the top six, I reckon. Certainly out of the top five. Or do they risk it and go for one more lap? He's got to stay right, isn't he? He's pitting. He's not pinning! Excellent! Excellent! And look at the time! 6.50! 6.50! That means this will be the last lap because time will run out on this lap. This is marvellous! This is marvellous! The di I've got goosebumps here! The dice has been rolled in round seven of the DNLS by VCO, the Nymex three hours, and Heusingfeld have rolled the dice. Now, Nils Kosh now with seven seconds in arrears, were they expecting it? I don't know. But he surely has got a push. Sets us 36 seconds further back. Canapino now has got one more lap to make up 18 seconds to get on to the podium. Well, they must have looked at the readout. They must know what the fuel numbers are. These are now very old tyres indeed. Seven laps completed for Sentowski. Oh, my goodness. The track temperature has come down, which I did say would help them at the end, but my goodness, they've rolled the dice. Love it. I thought they were out of it. I thought they'd gone maybe even two laps too long. We had cars stopping after five laps at the start of the race. Things were so hot. The pace was so hot. The track was so hot but they've stuck to their plan A. Adam Christodoulou qualified 
and took it about 57 minutes for seven laps. Handed it off to Mats Thorge. Hutzfeld, they've stayed out of trouble. There's not a mark on that Heusingfeld car. It has the detritus of racing on it, yes, but not a dent, not a bang, not a push. They've stayed out of it. They sat behind people in the draft. Meantime, the battle for TCR continues. And they'll go on to another lap. So Marius Gollenbeck and Felix Luding. They'll be ham hammering along for another lap. Who's got tyres left here? Well, these two. There shouldn't be any worries about fuel on the TCRs. And I have a suspicion these two stopped around about the same time in the 4.33 and the 4.76. Uh, the 4.03, excuse me. Yeah, they did. They stopped in exactly the same lap. And so they should be fine. Two very short stints before they jumped in. So six laps for the pair of them at the start of the race, then six laps for the second driver. Patrick Kabinci and Jürgen Frank were having a cracking battle. Then they did a lap extra and then handed over to these two. And they are about to head on to their last lap. In Cup, 4.8 seconds. And Martin Asher has just put the fastest lap of the race in in second place in the cup class, so Claudius Veed cannot relax at all. And where are they on the track? So, Veed's done five laps. Asher has just come out of the pits a couple of laps ago, so he should have a tyre advantage. Here's Sentowski. His gap is seven seconds. He's driving away from the pole sitting car. Accelerating through the gears as he comes up the hill from Bergwerk. Climbing all the while now. What strategy. Really, really impressive. coming oh going wide there those tires must be struggling just a little bit as he was coming through close the towel heads to the bottom of the carousel probably just over a third of the lap to go but still plenty of places that can catch him out got to keep the concentration the gap to second Nils Kosh and team BMW Bank the car that was fastest in qualifying with Kosh at the wheel, remember, seven seconds. Oh. Absolutely magnificent battles right throughout the field. In Porsche Cup, under six seconds now between Claudius Veed and Martin Asher. Looks like Tobias Ruff will nail third for Violent Racing in GT4, Sipola, after the mistake by Marcel Fassbender, has now got 12 seconds. Patrick Lankow still 20 seconds further back, but Christian Boog is catching Lankow for third on the podium and is just two seconds now behind the Team RSO for Zorg Rensport. And then TCR. Crank it up. Still going at it. Coming up to the top of the hill at Arenberg and now into the Foxhall under the Yorkohama crossover bridge. So they're barely 
a third of the way into the lap at the moment. Sentowski's just put his fastest sector two and sector three of the race and the fastest sector four of the race in on this last lap. Sentowski's pushing. He doesn't need to. He's got seven and a half seconds. He's coming through now to what's going to be a famous victory. Sentowski is finishing it off in style. But remember, there's racing behind and he's got traffic ahead of him. Goes past Fassbender, who's struggling. That's not the worst thing that can happen for Fassbender because the chequered flag will come out when the car in front of him now crosses the line. It means he won't get back on terms with Sipola, but it means he won't get caught by Lankow either on the last lap. Dotting a hole for the final time, past the tourist far and kiosk on the right hand side. Sentowski putting a full stop and an exclamation point on the good work that was done by his teammates earlier on. Matt Storger, Hutzfeld in the middle stint, and Adam Christodoulou. The chequered flag is out. Time has elapsed. And Team Heusingfeld, 101, win round seven, Nymex three hours. For the 2020 VCO Nürburgring Langstrecker Series. What a race, what a victory, what strategy, what speed. Ahead of the BMW in second, that was on pole position. Niels Kost anchors that lot home. Kai Kashuba doing the middle two stints, just a two driver. Sindra Setsash will be across the line for another podium finish for Man Filter HTP Windward Racing. Two AMGs and a BMW and Marla Racing, Augustin Canapino, is going to be about 16 seconds away from getting another podium, but it'll be fourth from the pit lane for the Marla Racing team, Williams E-Racing squad. Daniel LaFuente did his 14 laps in the middle of the race. Now, how about Sim Cup 2? Still some racing to go on there. Claudius Veed. Simon Gross in the middle of the race. Been battling against Martin Asher right the way through this race. Veed, 5.4 seconds to the good on Martin Asher. TCR at the carousel for the final time. GT4, similar for Core Racing. The 303. He's on his way home now as well to take a victory. And the top step of that podium looked much more difficult than I think he expected. Marcel Fassbender has finished. The chequered flag has been out. So he will get second place for BMW and Sim as RCWDE. Pascal Sticks doing a great job with Matty Sipola to take the win for Court in GT4, but they were pushed by the BMW this time, and that's the first time I've said that. But still can't pick a winner from the TCR class. We'll get you some interviews in a moment, but obviously you want to have all of the winners across the line in all of the classes and give them their due desserts. And there's still a first place to be decided here with Maris Gollenbeck for Corsim Racing. Nowhere near safe at the moment. Patrick Kabinji did his bit in the middle. Fearless leading qualified and started the yellow and black car in second and it was Jürgen Frank in the middle coming down towards Flansgarten for the final time for those TCRs now remember we have seen the perfect draft from that car in second at the moment when he lost the lead with a Porsche Cup car going through at the small carousel he dropped back just enough to get the run through the final corner onto the Dottinger Hurt and then down the main straight. He timed it perfectly. Now, what I can't remember which was which one of the drivers it was. Was it Felix, 
who was in the car at the time. I think it might have been Jürgen. Oh, he might be a bit close at the moment, but he's having a go. This is for the lead onto the Dottinger Hoer. Has he gone too early? It's compromised both their exits. Now, the problem with the TCR cars is you run out of revs if you try and go to early, put the side by side. And for a moment, the black and yellow cars in the lead. Well, has he gone too early? The core racing cars got to drop straight back in, weaving around, trying to break the tour. This is for the win. We've seen battles like this end in the barriers at the end of the lap. Here comes the core racing car back to the lead. The lead's changed twice on the Dottinger Hoa already, and it's not over. Bit of side drafting there under the Pilstein crossover bridge. They're going to tough it out. It's going to be side by side through the final corners. Who's the bravest? There's a touch. It was inevitable. There's going to be another touch to the right-hander. Almost a slide. Hard on the throttle from the core racing car and into the barriers. Oh, my goodness me. What a run to the line. What a final lap. But it is going to be then Felix Luding for CIMRC, controversially with contact into the final set of corners. Takes it just ahead of Marius Gollenbeck. Tiny, tiny margins. Gollenbeck got his foot down early to try and straighten the car up and get the run out. Patrick Kabinji did his bit in the middle. But the win will go to Felix Luding, who started and qualified the car. Jürgen Frank in the middle. What a finish. Claudius V confirmed. So that's another Asher Racing sponsored car and a Sim RC machine that will go through and take a win for Claudius V and Simon Grossman. Just ahead of Asher himself, who was in the background coming through there. And it'll be another core on the podium. Matty Sippola, after a really interesting battle, he and Pascal Sticks pushed all the way by the solo drive of Marcel Fassbender in the Sim RC, another Sim RC car. The best result for the BMW M4 GT4 that we've seen in this championship. Well, three hours, we said, we are already well over that, 10 minutes over that and plenty of action right throughout. Once again, VCO, the digital Nürburgring Langstrecker series has delivered drama, action, and fabulous racing all the way through. That had everything. Absolutely everything. Well done to all of the competitors as Sipola just has the final complex of corners before we can confirm that victory and coming to the line through the kink under the Bilstein Bridge and I get my breath back for a moment after an extraordinary last, well I was going to say last 30 minutes but really that's just been building and building and building like a pressure cooker for the whole three hours and finally something had to blow and it was in the TCR class. There goes Matty Sippola confirmed then as the winner in the GT4 category pushed right to the end well done to Claudius V for Sim RC in Porsche Cup Matty Sippler for Court uh, who wins in the GT4 category uh, along with his teammate, Pascal Sticks. Right, let's see if we can pull in an interview or two. Adam Christodoulou uh, is with us. So, first of all, hello, Adam. It's Hindoff here. Mate, I'm sorry I doubted you. Uh, can you hear me, Adam? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me all right? Smashing. 
Adam, I'm sorry I doubted you. At the start there, I thought seven laps early on in that heat with the tyres and the performance drop-off, I thought that couldn't possibly be the right thing to do. Good qualifying, fantastic race, mate. Well done. Was that always going to be the plan? Well, we're a bit unsure. We were just, uh, I was just trying to keep up with the car in front. Like my qualifying didn't quite go to plan. And in the end, um, the, the start of the race went pretty well. I think for some reason, P3 didn't start next to us. So I, just, I basically got straight into a third place. I thought about going for second, but in the end, obviously the guys were faster than me because they had qualified me. So I just thought, well, if I can stick with them for the first few laps, get them to drag me along and let's just see where we are. But uh, in the end, uh, Yen and Matt just put in blistering times and, uh, and we were just fuel saving and we were calculating it. I've got, it, I've got each lap on my, on my phone of how much fuel we needed to save uh, on each lap just to get us to the end. And then the next question was, are we going to, uh, are we even going to make it to the end of the, uh, the mm. race? So it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely touch and go all the way through. Um, it looked like you had a good car, Adam, if I'm honest. Uh, there was a couple of times when I thought you had a run on the Dotty Gehor, you, both you uh, and Mats Thorga uh, Hutzfeldt as well, who was, was in, in, in the car second. Uh, and it looked like you almost elected not to take the pass. Again, was that part of the fuel-saving strategy? Well, during the first few laps, no, it wasn't, because basically uh, we believe you can only do the, the longer strategy in the second or third stint because... You've also got to do the warm-up from where we grid to the start. So, of course, you end up using another litre of fuel there. And it's just one of those that we just try to do it as efficient as we can. And, of course, we, we also knew that each time you do a pit stop, you've got to come in and do a full set of tyres, which takes 27 seconds. So, um, yeah, in the end, it was all down to the fuel saving that Jan did right at the end. And uh, the, the second place BMW got within three seconds. And then they just seemed to get hammered by traffic three laps in a row and that just opened it up and uh, we uh, yeah it was really surprising but there's some serious fuel saving going on there like even even during my stint I just thought right I just stay behind because I, I wasn't sure if I was quick enough to get ahead and to pull a gap so I just thought well maybe it's dragging me along and in the end I think we got it by uh, just a few few seconds I think we got it by maybe four or five seconds which six was pretty and a half good. yeah six and a half, six and a half at the line it Adam, is, yeah. It was too close uh, to when you realised, like I was nervous. Yeah. I could feel <laughs> the nerves getting to me. When it went to 22 laps, when you realised it was going to 22, my predictor was hovering between uh, 21 and 22, 21 and 22. And when it went to 22, I mean, when did you realise that Jan was going to have to do a, a phenomenal piece of fuel saving? And how close was it at the end on that eighth lap? Well, basically, we, we crossed the line uh, with 1.1 litres left. And oh. so, uh, and with this, basically, once you get to 0 0.3, it almost, it, it basically stops. So uh, I think basically you turn the ignition off going across the line just to make sure that we could get back to the pits because that's the other thing. You need to make it back to the pits. So that's why the in-lap was quite painfully slow, but uh, I suppose it also gave us time to enjoy it as well. Brilliant stuff, mate. Uh, you, you've you've really been enjoying this uh, online uh, sim racing, particularly I know with the uh, VCO uh, series. When do we see you in a, a in a full metal car again? So uh, I am back at the Nurburgring next uh, in two weeks' time. So basically, um, yeah, a week on Friday, I'll be there for the next uh, NLS race. Uh, back with the HRT boys, and so hopefully we can have a repeat of a. Uh, of our last race the last race was a double header and we managed to win both races somehow in the end awesome. so uh so hopefully we can do that and get prepped for uh, the nurburgring 24 hours uh in a give few those, weeks time. give uh, give those boys in the more four racing league uh, including bradley and nick and all of our lot give them a bit of hell for us the next time you're racing on in their league as well well, well done adam well. thanks thanks to you thanks to the boys give Thank them all of our best won't you cheers adam christodoulou then uh, from the winning number eight car. Absolutely outstanding uh, from him. Let's confirm the uh, results then. Uh, at the front of the field, Heisingfeld from Team BMW Bank, from Manfilter Team HTP. That was the 101, the 107 and the 48 
uh, six and a half seconds and 44 seconds back from the leader. Augustin Canapino did a great job uh, at the end, along with his teammate Daniel Lafuente in the middle. They started from the pit lane in fourth. Claudius Veed brought home the SMRC Cup Porsche, uh, for the 276 for the win in the Cup 2 category, across, uh, ahead of Martin Asher driving on his own again for Asher Racing. Uh, Tobias Ruff anchored home at Violent Racing, the 276 on the podium. In GT4, what a battle! We had in GT4, the BMW led the race for Marcel Fassbender, who was driving on his own. And even when he got past, he had a go. He got back in the lead again. He was racing Matty Sipola for course sim racing in the Porsche at the end. And a tiny mistake uh, on the penultimate lap, hitting the outside, the right-hand side barrier, popped out of the Caracciola carousel uh, a little bit early, a little bit, uh, a little bit free with the right-hand pedal and got on that a bit early, earlier than he wanted to. But he finishes second, just 14 seconds off the lead, even with that damaged car, uh, ahead of Team RSO in third position. That, I think, uh, confirmed, uh, is, is somebody can tell me, is the best result by the new BMW M4 GT4 since it was introduced. As ever, the uh, TCR class was bonkers. Sim RC TCR getting uh, another win, two class wins for them then uh, in this one with uh, the 476 coming home just ahead of Marius Gollenbeck in the core sim racing team of 403 and Team Heisingfeld, another good result for them with the 404 car uh, as well. So that's how it finished. Let's see if we've got any more uh, people waiting in our waiting room. I don't think we do at the moment. Uh, so let's say a quick thank you to all of our colleagues at the uh, Nürburgring for putting in uh, all of our uh, great work, to all of their great work to get the pictures to us, Michael and the rest of the team. Thank you very much indeed. And Tim Gray was up in London. The responsible adult was everywhere. Uh, we'll have our VCO Victory Lane interviews on Wednesday night within Midweek Motorsport. That starts at 8 o'clock uh, UK time. Uh, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your motorsport weekend. What a round seven. The Nymex three hours of the Nürburgring for the Nürburgring Langstrecken Series, powered by VCO. Thanks for joining us on RS1, RS3, and around the world in sound and vision. I'm John Hindorf. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.